How are you tonight? For some reason, I'm always logged in on the shelves. Uh, uh, uh. Get me logged in on my account. <laughs> I had we got the camera slid over where you can see Roscoe. He was on his bed back there, but now he's up rambling around the house. Yeah, Michelle's in the kitchen around rattling dishes, and that, that attracts old Roscoe pretty. <laughs> All right. I am full, Kevin. Hey, Miss Sue, Backyard Beasley, SP Parr, Cindy Evans, JL327, Brenda Bryant, Michigan Prepper, Martin Melzer, everybody's piling on. Good to see all of you. Uh, Brenda said, hey, Michelle. Hey. She's over there hollering, hey, and y'all, I don't know what's on the TV in the background. I, I was watching Richard Jean, the fishing machine, so that's what's up there see him catching fish and whatnot. <laughs> if it becomes a problem, we can remove Richard from the... <laughs> Uncle Sasquatch, Mickey. Uncle Sasquatch, your buddy's been over here. I got the camera slid over where you can see him on his bed back there, but now he uh, I, he's in there in the kitchen hoping for some remnants of groceries to hit the floor. Mike, Karen, JL327 said happy birthday, Michelle. Thank you. Mike, we are absolutely getting plenty of rain. It, I, I filmed this morning. Yesterday, I baited up all my limb lines, and I was going to go run them first thing this morning, and then we were going to go to Tennessee and deliver and we knew there was some bad weather coming. We didn't really think it was going to be that much of it. And by the time I got, I waited till about, because when I first woke up this morning, I could hear thunder. And I was like, well, I'm not going to go down there and get in a canoe. And it thundered. And then it got hairy. And then I went down there and run my lines. And I pulled everything up today as I run them. I was soaked. I come back to the house looking like a drowned rat. <laughs> Larry from Columbus, Georgia. Jeff, good to see you, bud. Jimmy Sullivan, how are you? Will Parker. Larry Reese, good to see you, Larry. Jason McAllister. Brenda, yesterday the 7th was her birthday. She's the Lordy, Lordy, look who's 40. <laughs> She'll be real proud of me for disclosing her age. But don't worry, I still got a few years on her. She's still a young one. <laughs> so anyway, welcome all of you. Will Parker, greetings from Alaska. Sunny and beautiful here today. Well, good flip-flop of the weather for you up there in Alaska. Y'all have a pretty day and we get the bad weather. Usually it's right the opposite. Oh, I have a, there's, a, I guess to most of us in the lower 48, there is a, a big lustrous lure of Alaska, the wild and you know, I'm sure it's not as wonderful as it's, you know, made out to be on TV. But I would I, I would love to come up there and see Alaska. I think there's a lot of Alaska that I would really like, except the deep cold. That, that way below freezing, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready for. <laughs> yeah, Mike, I actually waited till the storms is over to go run the lines. I, if I'd have had a John boat with a motor, I probably would have took on off this morning and run them before the storms. But with a canoe, if I get down there in that swamp, y'all is famous for bad weather. If it comes through here, the tornadoes will follow that swamp. And, and uh, I, I just don't be down there. So, 
Anyway, anyway, we had we had a good run. I think I caught like four fish. I pulled everything up. I'm wanting to put the John boat in the main river channel down here, a little further down the swamp, and fish some different waters. I wanted to get down there and camp out and run them, stay with them all night, but y'all, it's been tough to come up with enough bait to, to run. I'm getting just a little bait here, there, and yonder, so... Uh, I guess last year it getting really dry, limited the bait. I'm sure there's bait in areas, probably in abundance, but the areas that I have normally got bait seems to not be any bait. And crawfish is one of the main things I like to fish with, and they just, there's not a lot of them. So that's why they cost so much in South Louisiana right now. And, you know, we feeling the effects of it too. I have raked places that normally three or four rakes, I got a bucket full of crawfish. And I have waited. You'll see when the video comes out. Uh, it's uploaded or uploading. And uh, it'll come out maybe in the morning. I don't know which one. I, I fished Bluff Lake Monday and filmed that video. Edited it. It's ready to go. And I have not released it yet either. So I, <laughs> I don't know which video is going to come out when. But I have enjoyed fishing a good bit. And... I've not had a lot of success. I went to Bluff Lake and crappie fished. I caught five fish. Uh, the reason, well, I caught six. One was real short and I threw it back. But the reason was is Noxaby River runs into that thing. And y'all, I didn't realize they got so much rain last weekend up there. The fields that me and Michelle drove by and I filmed that. had a bunch of... Uh, hen bit and purple dead nettle out in it. The whole field looked purple. Well, that field was underwater. You could literally see the, the sprigs up through the grass and the rows. So that is why I didn't really catch nothing up there Monday. But we had a good day of fishing, seen some alligators, and I made a video out of it anyway. Wild onions down there, Larry said. Larry, I love to cook with, mostly I use the field garlic here. Uh, we've got wild onions too. And I cook with them a lot, and uh, Michelle was just talking about how much she loved onions, so I'm going to have to go put her on the wild onions, let her try them out. She's been sautéing onions in there to put on her baked potato. That's what we eat for supper is baked potatoes and the leftover chicken because we gobbled that beaver up, so it was so good that we didn't hardly even eat the chicken. No, I'm kidding. I did eat about a half of that back quarter of the beaver i didn't eat the front part the head and all that i know i know some of you's worried about i was eating all the head some folks told me that the brain and all in that beaver was good but now y'all i just didn't get that hungry for oh. whatever reason i you know <laughs> i just yeah i told michelle said well, you want me to warm that beaver up in the oven up here today i said yeah i was down there working i had brody in the pottery shop with me it's pouring down rain, and we come up here to eat, and I said, I thought you was going to warm this up. She said, oh, I didn't want to put it in the oven. She said, his teeth would go to stinking. I said, do what? She said, well, when I was at the vet's office, they go to working on them on teeth, said it smelt so bad. <laughs> yeah, Brenda, I'm going to agree with you. I'm, I'm not going to eat no brains. I, I mean, well, I'm not going to say I won't. I'm going to be bad hungry, and that's all they are when I do. I'll just put it that way. Brains is for tanning hides, not really eating. <laughs> Brody is at his nana's. He went over there and talked them into carrying him out to eat tonight. They went and got hamburgers. <laughs> so Brody is eating hamburger tonight. Alicia, I agree with you. She said some things don't need to be heated up inside the house. <laughs> But, you know, I, in all honesty, y'all, beaver is really good. And everybody keeps asking me, what does it taste like? And I know some of y'all probably have eaten more of it than I have. But for those, all of you that haven't, it's somewhere between deer and beef. That would be my most accurate way to describe it. But now it has its own distinct flavor. Uh, it's not bad flavored, but it definitely, I mean, it's it tastes like beaver. It's not... So anyway, Larry said, your teeth get long from eating that beaver. Have to get a curry comb to brush your teeth. <laughs> That's a good one, Larry. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard some tales like that too. Oh, 
the beaver the beaver is actually really good uh now what i eat is like from the waist down of the beaver the back legs and all the meat on the ribs all that's good but now after i cooked it all the ribs is real thin you'd just about have to cut it and cook it separately to keep it from getting tough so that you get the thicker parts done I cooked the whole thing because it just looked cool with the whole thing thrown up on the grill. Uh, Michelle, you got a dog outside hollering. Her, she put her little dog outside, Lucky, and she'll let you know when you when you forget her outside. But now, y'all, it's still raining. It had quit for about an hour or so, and from the sounds of things, it has started back raining. So if the Internet goes out, it'll be due to the rain and satellite. You know, internet. Jerome Steele said to you know, I ain't really thought about eating. I ain't really thought about trying to go get worms right now. You know, I have never put worms on limb hooks, but you know, that really ain't a bad idea. Um, a lot of people around here use puppy dogs, which is the salamanders, but it's a lot of work to go rummage around the woods looking for them under rotten logs. And I'm sure I've got some good places to look. I could probably find a bunch of them, but it's just a, a lot of work to go find them all today. Um, I would say that night crawlers would probably work really well on limb hooks for catfish. I just think they would. I, I, I have never tried it. Why has that never crossed my mind? I don't know, but it should have. Sean Deaver, good to see you, brother. Pouring rain in Kentucky. It has rained cats and dogs. I mean, come a frog strangler this morning. Y'all, I'm going to have to pull this up just a little bit. I had it over where y'all could see old, old Roscoe when he got on his bed, but I don't know where he went. He's probably up to bed with his mom. But anyway, I, I was, I've been filming for the last three days, me and Brody raking crawfish and then me pulling the bait baskets up and getting a bunch of live bait and then baiting the hooks up. And then I, today I was going down there to run them. Well, it come that storm this morning. I thought, well, I'll get a clip of all this rain. So I walked out on my back porch out there. And y'all, that piece of tin, I don't know if y'all remember it from videos, but on the top of my black stone, I cut an old piece of tin, bent the ends down to cover the top of my black stone just to keep the rain from coming in and getting on the surface off. And uh, I walked out there, and I mean, the wind was blowing, but I didn't think nothing about it. I, the rain's just whooping, and I just gonna get a quick video clip, you know, scanned around. And about that time, that piece of tin left the top of that black stone and went right by my head. And you'll see this in the video when it comes out. It's in there. I was filming when it, when it took place. Now, you can't just see it real good, but you'll see it shoot through the corner of the screen. And then I turned around and was like, showed, showed what it was. It scared me because, I mean, it, it literally missed me by like this much. So... <laughs> But anyway, we got out in a frog strangler and run our lines. Have you ever had barbecued deer? My mom makes it really good. Yeah, I have cooked deer about every way possible. Uh, it's good barbecued. Uh, I normally go to, uh, I like it cooked like a steak off the hindquarter and then fry the back straps and then most of the rest of it we put in pot roast and then grind a lot of it up and make ground meat. Mickey said, is the tail of a beaver good for anything? There's a lot of people that tan wallets and stuff out of them. The mountain men claimed that beaver was a delicacy. I've never cooked the tail because we have a $20 bounty on them. Well, that's like eating a $20 bill, you know. I, I don't even need a steak that expensive. So they go in the freezer and I take them when I get a handful of them and cash them in and get the money in now. Uh, I don't know if the other counties around, that is just in the Shoba County, so. But they, the skin is unique and, and they tan it and make all different sorts of things. I see somebody saying make coin purses, but 
There's a guy that I used to watch. He, his YouTube channel and podcast just like went bloom, just dropped off the map. But he was a coyote trapper in Georgia, and uh, I followed, watched all of his videos till he disappeared. And he was tanning them himself and making wallets. And I think some of his business like that took off. And he just dropped everything else and followed his business. So, uh, yeah, they're good for a lot of things. Do I ever ship out any game file hatching eggs? No, I, in fact, I really hadn't even hatched a lot of game file. In fact, I have not put, I hadn't even turned the incubator on this year. I just decided I wasn't going to fool with them. Uh, I got more chickens than I can feed now. And Brody don't seem to really be interested in fooling with them, and I ain't either. I'd rather fish. I want to go camping, and if I put eggs in the incubator, then that me leaving for one day is out for 30 days because mine is set up to hand roll, and somebody's got to go in there and roll them eggs around twice a day. And I said, you know what? I am not fooling with them. What hatches here will hatch under hens out there, and that's, I, I had never tried to ship a chicken or an egg and, and probably won't. I just, it just seems to be more trouble than it would be worth, you know. Yeah, the little bitty black dog running around, that is Lucky. I don't know where she's. Lucky. She stays right under her mama's foot over here for the most part. Here comes the celebrity Roscoe through the house. Roscoe, what are you doing? Folks on there want to see you. Well, Michigan, this guy, he nothing happened to him. He he come on and commented on because a lot of people was concerned, and finally, like six months later to a year later, he come on there and commented that that he appreciated everybody concerned about him, that he was just really busy and didn't have time to do so. I don't think it was anything like that, but he just, you know, <laughs> and I can see it from my perspective right now and the way things are, YouTube and such as this, especially at the level I'm doing it, like the amount of, of videos I'm putting out, not my success being so great, but just the effort I'm putting into it right now just because I like it so much. It could get overwhelming, and if you don't truly enjoy it, it'll take over your life and become so miserable that you don't want food with it, you know? You'd be like, you know what, this ain't worth it. Um, I, I do it because I enjoy filming and carrying on and talking and entertaining, and not to mention I really enjoy the ministry side of it that I am reaching people, and for me, that is number one, so that is one of the reasons I keep really pushing it. Uh, because I do feel like if all my efforts reach a few people, then it was all worth it. And that's that's the reason I'm doing it. But I enjoy it. I enjoy hunting and fishing, and, and it pushes me to get out and, and do new adventures. Y'all, I'm trying stuff that I've never tried before. And, and one of the things that I started off into last year that you're going to probably see a good bit of, it's not going to be overwhelming, is fishing with that vintage those vintage reels. I really like my old reels. Roscoe's got his bone that one of y'all sent him. Bring it here. He likes to bring it to me and I throw it and he'll go get it. And he does that in the house. Another three inches tonight in South Carolina. I, it got it got bad early this morning for it like uh, 8 o'clock, 7.30 to 8 o'clock, it got bad here. And uh, I really was probably like tornado weather. And they was I didn't get outside to see all of it, but a lot of people that were on the roads traveling started taking pictures of this big shelf cloud that come through. And, I mean, it was, they, it was all over Facebook's how I saw it. And uh, it, it just <laughs> right a little beaver, Cindy. Yeah, Glenn, the, the real scene out fishing 13's video where he tunes, I have not. I'll have to pull him up. Out fishing 13. Um, 
I, those old reels and what I'm really wanting is to get, and I've been looking on eBay and I shouldn't be looking on eBay. It's never good for me to be looking on eBay. But I'm looking for a vintage rod to put one of those reels on. I mean, I've got it on the the rod that I actually fished with as a young one. It's a, like a Walmart. Now, Roxanne is right up under the tripod. So if y'all go wonky in a minute, it's, it's Roxanne's doing. She's over here playing with a toy. Bring me your toy. You want me to throw it? Bring it here. Oh, she come over here to be pitied. Come here. They can't see you there. <laughs> you you the one that was in on the chain in that video that everybody thought you was so mistreated. Yeah. Yeah, and anyway, the uh, that old reel though, I it, it's just special to me, and I have caught a lot of good bass on it, and I have caught a few grunnel on it. I have never really just grunnel fished heavy with that reel. Yeah, she just hit the tripod. This is what she is playing with. Y'all see that? I figured she'd go diving after it. Uh oh, I. I have done messed up again. There it went. Fixed it. You know, Larry, I have not put a drop of milk in it, but I have done exactly what you're describing several times, but I have not added milk. So what does the milk do? That kind of just pull everything together? Where's the bone, Roscoe? Where's the bone? Where's the toy? I don't know what they did with it. They run off with it, Alicia. I was gonna squeak it again, but I don't know where he, where he made off to with it. Roscoe's laying up on the couch over here. Cindy, yes ma'am, I will be praying for you. Sure will. Oh. Uh, that's got a squeaker in it, hasn't it? <laughs> Roscoe will really get it going now. All right. Uh, yes, ma'am, Miss Cindy, I'll be praying for you. I know... Uh, Times can get tough in a, in a hurry. It don't take but just a second for good times to go south. So I'll, I'll be praying for you. Larry said it makes it a little creamier and lighter. Oh. Oh no, Miss Brenda, these dogs is all spoiled. Overfed and overweight and sleeping in the bed and everywhere else. I seen another uh Cindy said we love looking at home is so pretty. Miss Cindy, this house is is pieced together. Most everything in it is rescued or salvaged, repurposed. I mean just about everything is is either thrift store antique store or people we personally know we got stuff like the barn wood and all of these and, and up like uh -huh. on the walls and then this bookshelf i built uh -huh. a lady at our church her and her husband new uh cabinets put in their house and they had this pile of good wood where their old cabinets, the, they tore the cabinets out. They just piled them on a carport. Well, the man was in a wheelchair and they couldn't do anything with the stuff. And I said, I'll haul it off for you. I, I, I'll use some of the wood, you know, so I'll come get it. And I brought it home and I mean, there was a bunch of it that was junk and busted, but I got enough of it out that I built this bookshelf. <laughs> I think I had to buy, I don't know if I bought anything. I think I had to get another piece of wood that I had to finish out, but that whole bookshelf back there, I built out of rescued, salvaged stuff. But the barn wood on the walls is a, that barn was like 120 years old. I took it down, took a lot of the stuff off, all the tin in the ceilings off of a roof we redone. A lot of stuff that, but, 
it's my style. It's not for everybody because it's not, it's hard to clean. When them spider webs get on these walls, y'all, it is a job to get them all down, especially with 16 foot ceilings. So there's a lot of them that you don't get down regularly. <laughs> But it is just rustic. It is, it's what we like. It's not for everybody. I don't, see, I don't do crown mold and fancy looking sheetrock type corners, you know, everything. Look, I, that, it just, I don't know. I don't, I don't even like it. It's not what I wanted. I wanted rough cracks, character, stories, I, you know. If it looks perfect and crown molding and looks fancy, it, gives me a like a walmart feel like well everybody could have that you know i want something unique and i'm unique probably not in a good way but <laughs> you know if it fits us and our personality i mean me and my wife when we go out of town and that was one of the reasons today we did not go to memphis we could have made it to the store to deliver the pottery today probably we didn't want to drive in real bad weather but our biggest thing was is we didn't want to rush up there and barely make it to a store in time to drop the pottery off and then drive straight back. We like to have time to go to thrift stores. <laughs> so we was like, we'll just wait and go Monday. <laughs> so that's what we like is thrift stores and antique stores, and we walk around and just see what we find. We don't need nothing, you know. It's like a treasure hunt every time you leave the house. I love all of my stuff. And all of this stuff back here, let me show y'all. Y'all see on the mantle, you see all of that, that, them dishes across there? What's the most you've paid for any of that? Probably $5? Three or four dollars. Three or four dollars per piece at thrift stores, and every bit of it is something called ironstone from England that she collects. And it's, it's pretty expensive stuff if you get on eBay or somewhere like that and try to buy it. But she finds it where somebody's thrown it away and she's been collecting it because you just kind of find it here, there, and yonder and it's it's like a treasure hunt. And a lot of times during the summer when we got fresh peppers, I'll put jalapeno or uh, banana peppers especially in mine and some of that kind of stuff. So we, uh, you know, I, I have done that a lot. And I'm what I do is I sausage or either ham chopped up. And if I ain't got either one, I'll take a hot dog weenie and chop it up real small and <laughs> put it in there. But, you know, usually sausage is what I use. We got tube sausage, and we got a good bit of it right now. And uh, Uncle Sasquatch, I have got an old hickory knife about this long. I think I showed it in a video the other day, and let me tell you where I found it. I was moving, putting them fishing poles up in the ceiling, and they was all in that corner, and that knife was laying down in that corner. And it is one of the old hickory, old knives, but it's like this long. I mean, it would make a perfect patch knife. Milk is a ticket with omelets. So I've, I've got to do an omelet now with the milk. How much milk do you put? Now, like, when I make an omelet, I, I take like a a handful of sausage and I'll chop up a maybe a half onion almost a half anyway if we're talking about a round onion if I'm doing the green onions I chop up you know two or three um and then I do like four to six eggs I because we got plenty of eggs this time of year I mean you need to do something but we got eggs running out our ears right now Cause I ain't letting none of my big pen hatch and then my Americanas is laying really good. So, and that's the eggs Michelle likes.
Yeah, Rhonda, you got it right. Come to Crump, Tennessee, Savannah. Where is Savannah, Tennessee, Michelle? Is that close to where we go? We got a store in Germantown, and then we go to Dyersburg, and occasionally we go to Parsons and uh, Jackson, and there's two or three, another little town up there we go to. We used to go into Friendship, which on the way to Dyersburg, we would go through Friendship, Tennessee, but mostly on the, the western side of Tennessee. It's over there close to uh, Selma. On that side over there. For a flea market, I had to check into that. We love we love those flea markets and stuff like that. Cindy, she said your home is gorgeous. Doesn't the sixteen foot ceilings make it difficult to heat? No, you can heat it real easy in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't pass that up. No, we don't have no problem heating the house. It holds heat really well, which it's double insulated. In other words, it's a metal building, and I put that thin, full-backed insulation around the outside of the house, and then we went in and put the batten all in there, and the ceiling is done the same way because it's, it's you know, it's <laughs> ceilings way up. <laughs> And I know that camera squeaking probably loud to y'all. Um, but now in the summer, it is hard to cool because the problem that I have is I've got metal purlins and purlins is what you put on your metal trusses that your tin screws to. And with a tin ceiling and a metal purlins, it conducts heat through the summer. And it heats that whole ceiling up. And I can literally walk up that loft up there, my hand up on that tin, and it's hot to the touch. Spring, summer, sometime, I'm going to install above my deer heads right up here above me, in the top corner, an exhaust fan that'll pull into this attic over the bedrooms because all of my soffits are vented and I'm gonna to try to suck some of the heat out during the summer and I'm gonna fix it to where I can seal it back off in the winter. And uh, so that is just an attempt and an idea that I had that may or may not work, you know? But uh, it's not hard to, to heat. It, it actually heats pretty good, but now I will say with the concrete floors, in the center of the house, it ain't too bad, but like when I'm sitting at my computer, the front porch is connected right there to that wall and my feet is real close to the wall while I'm editing videos and that concrete is cold. You cannot be in here when it's cold in the winter with no socks on. So now I've got a habit of wearing socks all the time. In the summer, no shoes, no socks. Like, oh, uh, Kenny Chesney in the, in the summer here. Yeah. Pretty big sail is by the Tennessee River. That's up there where Richard Jean fishes. <laughs> Favorite kind of music? I either bluegrass or classical. <laughs> and I don't listen to a lot of music. Uh, probably bluegrass folk would be the, the biggest thing. Uh, my my main thing about music is I want anything that somebody writes, plays an instrument, and sings their own songs. Without those three things, I really am not interested in you. You know, if if somebody else has got to write your song and you got other people playing the instruments and you just standing there singing, I I don't even want to hear what you got to say. You know, and that's with any genre. I just I, you know. Part of being a musician is I sing and play a guitar or play the drums or play the bass or, you know, at least beat a tambourine. <laughs> at least show me you can keep rhythm. <laughs> but, I, you know, I got a lot of respect for a songwriter that sings. Write a song and sing me your song you wrote and, and we own something.
Deaver, we uh we made it a couple of, of barbecue places in Memphis that have been really good. Uh, we ate one over on the south side of Memphis the other day that was really good, but I, I'll be honest with you, I hated to tell them. What was the name of that place we eat at at Memphis the last time we was there? Memphis Barbecue or something? Memphis Barbecue Company. I like it. Memphis Barbecue Company. It was good, but now I'm going to just have to tell them. I got a burger, a, a slaw burger, and I had a better slaw burger over here in uh, Pickensville, Alabama. He just got mad because he spilled his drink in his lap right off the bat. <laughs> I was already mad before that about something. What was I frustrated about before we ever... We was late. It was Friday. I was going to miss doing it live, and I was already ill. We'd been on the road all day, and I don't know, something else. He had, was pouting is what he was I doing. I was frustrated, and I knocked my drink over him. I'm talking about poured a drink all in my lap. That was the night I tried to do the live in the road on the way home. But honestly, the slaw burger, I used to the best slaw burger, barbecue slaw burger I have ever ate was at Pickensville over here by the Tom Bigby River. There was a place, the store's still there, but it used to be owned by local people, and they had a restaurant in the back corner of it, and it was a bait shop, big store, gas, ice, boat, bait, everything. You could buy dip nets, fish baits, whatever you needed to fish. And that slaw burger they made back there was as fine a slaw burger as I have ever had. We're we going to have to make a slaw burger here at some point. Uh, I think I have still got some hog hindquarters out there in the freezer that needs cooking. We'll smoke one some point and make slaw burgers out of them. Uh, for those of you that are in places of the country that don't know what a slaw burger is, it's a pulled pork burger with coleslaw, big gob popped on the top of it. And man, you talking about fine. I didn't know what a slaw burger was. I'd sung that old song. Who sung that song? A Nitty Gritty Dirt Band or somebody? It was talking about, you know, a slaw burger fries. Well, I didn't know what they was talking about till I had one one time. And man, a slaw burger is where it's at when it comes to barbecue now. Yeah, just Rhonda, if the slaw's done right. Very crucial that the slaw is good. That was what was wrong at Memphis the other day. Their barbecue was good. Their slaw was lacking. <laughs> That's where I fell out with them. <laughs> but now my biggest thing is if I walk in there and I get a sip of the sweet tea and the tea ain't real sweet, we we probably on our way on, on non-speaking terms pretty straight way. <laughs> Dumas Walkers, that's right, Uncle Sasquatch. You knew exactly where the Kentucky Headhunters. Yep. In fact, I think I seen you with a shirt on the other day. Somebody I saw had a Kentucky Headhunter shirt. It was Uncle Sasquatch had a Kentucky Headhunter shirt because I said something about it, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I told you that he got a Kentucky Headhunter shirt on. Yeah. Yep. It's all circling back around. Pick you up in a pink limo. Now, Deaver, you's uptown. They picked you up in a pink limo. Now, I'd have probably got in there to have cow horns on the front. Had needed cow horns on the front. Needed some Texas longhorns on the front of that limo. <laughs> Jeff said, I'd jam out some bluegrass. My brother plays the banjo. Well, Jeff, you, I hope you got to hear old J.R. Willis when he is over here picking I'm, I'm hoping I can get them back around here before too awful long warms up. We'll go fishing again and, and get JR back on that banjo a little bit. Just call it a barbecue sandwich with slaw. Well, you ain't wrong, I, you know. But now you know it as a slaw burger. But, yeah, uh... I mean, it's a barbecue sandwich with slaw. You, you're not wrong. <laughs> Where everybody else will be like, no, uh -uh, it's supposed to be. No. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> barbecue sandwich and put slaw on it. Do you know what a clevenator is? 
You're going to have to explain that to me. I'm lost on it. Two blocks from Graceland. A Kelvinator. Michelle, what is a Kelvinator? A fridge. Mm. Well, Kelvin is a form of temperature, is it not? Kelvin. Mm, I don't know. You got me scratching my old nog in there. A fridge, an ice box. That would make sense to me too, y'all. John, I, I, you know. I, but I'm betting that ain't what it is. <laughs> I'm betting we all wrong for, for whatever reason. I got a huge suspicion that that ain't what it is. <laughs> Doing a clay shoot from Moffitt Cancer Center in Florida. Wishes luck. Well, good luck, Sammy. Hope y'all shoot straight, shoot well. Bust them clay pigeons all up. Go up there. Hey, I tell you what you need to do before you go shoot. You need to watch that Andy Griffith episode where that woman outshot him. He was trying to impress her, and she outshot him. I can't remember which episode it is, but. <laughs> so we was right. It was a refrigerator. Well, <laughs> the Calvinator. So it is an old fridge company, Richard says. Learn something new. I would have never guessed a Calvinator was a refrigerator because my mind was like Kelvin, you know, but after somebody mentioned that Kelvin is a form of, Temperature or, or, me or measurements. So, yeah. Marvin, Martin Meltzer said something that Kelvinates. Martin, we got a nice package in the mail the other day. Brody, he's he's got some legendary warriors from somebody. I filmed it. We just hadn't managed to wedge it into a video somewhere this week yet. But Brody's real proud of his, his legendary warriors is what he's calling them. Did he them. just name, make up that name? I think he did. She was a champion. I think I have seen every Andy Griffith episode there ever was at least 10 times. Because I bet you I have watched it from start to finish when it was on Netflix and when it was on Prime all the way through a couple of times, like from start to finish. First episode to the last one. Now, I kind of fall out with them when they get over into the color. I, I wouldn't be going to Andy Griffith. It was just something about it. When it went into full color, I was like, uh. Well, one thing, when, they, when Barney wasn't on there, without Don Knotts, it wasn't even much of a show. She also played Annie Oakley. Tammy Barber, I don't know if Brody will or not. Uh, he'll have good opportunity. Um, he don't seem to be interested with it yet, but then these days it is like the other night we was talking about going camping and he was naming off everything we was going to put in the camper and he said to guitar and I was like, well, what we need to guitar? He said, you might want to sing a song. I said, okay. That's a, that's a good thing to have. We'll put it in there. <laughs> so we're planning on taking the camper in like two weeks up to Tom Bigby and spend like two or three days up there. So that's why we was discussing it. So Pluto has an Andy Griffith channel. We've, we've watched it. I, we've been on Tubi. I have been watching Tubi at night because I have been on a Sherlock Holmes kick. The old Sherlock Holmes shows, the, the episodes, it was in black and white. And then I went over and I've watched a couple of the ones that was in color that was like the more movie type ones that I can't remember who played. I don't know them old actors who played what, but I like Sherlock Holmes. I don't know. I know old shows was pretty clean, you know. Uh oh, they eat birthday cake. Well, Rebecca, my wife, has watched every Matlock and Murder She Wrote that they ever was. She likes that old woman on Murder She Wrote pretty good. 
And I, I never got into Matlock. I just be, I didn't care. Now, in the heat of the night, we watched that for a while. He was in it. It, it was all right, but. Well, we hadn't, Martin, we hadn't played with the large checkers. They in a the bag because we're going to take them with a camper. He had just brought out a box of checkers, and, and honest to God, we've had so much going on, we hadn't had time to sit down and play anything. No, he wanted to play chess. He wanted to play chess. He saw on something, and I said, well, you might ought to start with checkers. And and we we got the box. He brought the set out, and we never really got a chance to play but we've had pottery events like in the morning we've got to go do handprint event and we've got just been a lot going on. We've had church events and I don't know exactly what all going on, but hard to keep up with everything. Yeah, Norris, I like the Three Stooges, but you know, I don't know that I've watched them in color. Now, I, I was okay with Beverly Hillbillies when it went in color. I, I don't know. It didn't. I, I didn't. Uh, I've watched Diagnosis Murder. It used to come on after Matlock. It, it may still do. I don't know if I've seen Diagnosis Murder. I love Green Acres. I have watched a lot of Green Acres because this is a goofy. It's, it's hilarious. Really, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Larry said to your eyes, the author of Sherlock Holmes got so sick of him, he killed him. Is that truth or are you just pulling my leg again? Sometimes I don't know whether to take Larry seriously or not. <laughs> oh, Lord. And y'all, I don't get into the, the stories. I have read all of the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's. But you know, there's a lot of other authors that picked him up and started writing his tales, you know, the young Sherlock Holmes and all this other stuff. And y'all, I like Dick Van Dyke. Cindy, I liked him for a while, but something about Dick Van Dyke, I got sick of him after a little bit. It was hilarious for a while. The other guy that was on there with him, I really think he was funnier than Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke just got so silly. It, it, I don't know. For me, it just kind of got... I don't know. It just... Well, Logan, I'm going to tell you, son, you have missed Slam Out. Go back and watch all of Andy Griffith. If you've never watched all of Andy Griffith, watch all of Andy Griffith. Start at the beginning. It's on Pluto. It's on Tubi. It's on... About any of them, probably on Amazon Prime and all. Uh, and I can I can honestly say pr and proudly say I have never seen one episode of The Walking Dead, or The Hunger Games, or it, I it just <laughs> oh Lord. Oh, uh, we got to watching. I never liked some of the newer shows from the 90s, but we got, or 80s, but we got into Cheers one time. I watched all of them, and then now I don't care nothing about them, but I watched them because I couldn't stand that blonde headed woman. I kept hoping something. And then we got to watching Frasier. But now we watched all of uh, Magnum P.I. We got big into that for a while one yeah, time and but watched. I don't, I don't care for the new one. Every episode of them. Yeah, we're talking about the old shows. Oh. Uh, I, I'd go back, and and you need to go back and watch Andy Griffith, Logan. You 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 don't need to go through life without watching Andy Griffith. You need to sit down and watch every episode, start at the beginning and watch them all the way through. One thing, honest to God, there's a lot of good life lessons, and Andy Griffith was hands down the best TV dad on there. I seen somebody they was all arguing over who the best TV dad was. And they was naming off people. I was like, have you lost your mind? Andy Griffith won that hands down. He was the best TV dad that they ever was. I don't care what nobody says. Heather, thank you for ordering mugs. I saw the order come through. Hey, and uh, y'all, we shipped out a bunch of mugs, what, yesterday? But now I will say just run to yours wasn't shipped out. 
because you wanted it autographed and I've got to get a mug autographed and get fired. So that held you up a little bit, but we get it. We're working on it. We hadn't forgot it. Spirit of the Outdoors is Billy Boatner's favorite show, and you are the man. Shout out to Billy Boatner because his favorite show is Spirit of the Outdoors. And that should be right now everybody's favorite new show. It should be on and ever home in America. <laughs> Little House on the Prairie. I never got into that. Now, I know a lot of people did. I think it's a really good show. I don't know, like the Waltons. I never really got into the Waltons. I, I think it was a good show. And... uh. So they, there's a lot of those shows I just never got into, and they may come a day in the future that I'm like, oh, man, how come I never liked this, you know? I, so I ain't going to talk bad about any of them. I just never watched the Waltons much. You know, Deaver, there's been several. Uh, that's like Cheech and Chong. They said at the time of them filming the Cheech and Chong movies that they had never done drugs. Somebody else, uh, like some of the rock and roll, like was it Sammy Hagar? You'd think, you know, at the heyday of rock and roll, he'd never done drugs. But a lot of times somebody that can play the best drunk ain't never drank anything. That's probably why they play it so well. Grizzly Adams, I've watched that. He, that's a good show. Cheaper by the Dozen, that was a good movie, Don. I, I, we watched that. Uh, Cindy said nobody could outdo Tom Selleck in Magnum P.I. Nobody could outdo Tom Selleck in a whole lot of anything. He played some really good westerns. Uh, that that series is like three three shows, I think. The Sackets. It's, a, you know, the Louis L'Amour, but they did a movie, The Sackets, and he was in it, and it was really good. And, of course, Quigley Down Under. Oh, yeah. Petticoat Junction, yeah. I watched a little of M.A.S.H., Mash was it was all right. It it wasn't like at my top, but it was it was a good show. That's like Hogan's Heroes. I I watched it. It was all right. Logan, you like old Jeremy Wade, River Monsters. Doctor Quinn, the Medicine Woman. I have heard of Dr. Quinn, and you know, I don't know that I have watched Dr. Quinn. I have watched it, but my mom used to watch it all the time. I don't know that I ever watched Dr. Quinn. Yeah, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for the call to see how close this works. Dukes of Hazard on Friday nights. Well, you know, there ain't nothing on none of the streaming things that plays Dukes of Hazard because I was going to let Brody watch it, and I could not pull up Dukes of Hazard nowhere. I guess because of the Confederate flag on top of the car, they've banned it from there. Nobody wants to watch it. You can't be proud to be from the South anymore. You're racist if you are, so go figure. None of us down here are really racist. It just, people like to brand us that way. The Confederate flag was, we're just proud to be Southern, is really what most people wave it for. It is not nothing to do with racism. I'm sure there are some racist people that use it for their benefit, yes. But that ain't what everybody that waves the Confederate flag is really, honest to God, just proud to be from the South. And that's really what it honestly means to them that are waving it most of the time. I said most of the time, not always. Um, but, uh, you know, there's no, no uh, Dukes of Hazard no more. And that was a great show. Had a lot of good morals in it, good teaching lessons in it. Oh, uh, 
the Centennials, I've seen some of them. Somebody turned me on to them back a couple of years ago, and I watched several of them of the Centennials. I don't know that I got all of them. But now I tell you, another good one, as y'all talk about Tom Selleck and stuff, because Michelle likes Blue Bloods. I ain't crazy about it. I don't get into a lot of the newer stuff at all. I just, I don't know. I don't really care nothing about a lot of newer stuff, but I like the Rockford Files along that line. Rockford Files and Columbo. I don't know what it is about Columbo. It, it's almost a little bit goofy, but I like the show for whatever reason. Oh. The Life of Jesus Christ. I don't know that I've 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 seen that. I have to check. I have watched a lot of the religious movies. Alaska Bush people. I watched a little of it. I like like The Last Alaskan and Life Below Zero and the Kilchers. We watched them for a while. I kind of got burnt out on them, but. The Mountain Men's, we watched all the Mountain Men shows, and of course, I like the Mountain Men, the movie. Crossfire Trail was a good one. Oh, yeah, Keith, they butchered all of them. And the one of them I watched was okay, but yeah, they butchered all of them. But no, they always do. When Hollywood goes to redoing stuff, they just about gonna, gonna butcher it. Crossfire Trail. Oh, who all was in Crossfire Trail? Yeah, I remember that movie now. Where the, the they got on the ship. Sam Elliott is a good one now. I like some. I've got probably all of Sam Elliott's westerns. And like I've said before, I love Tombstone, but it has got so much profanity in it. I have not watched it in years. Oh, uh, it just. Tombstone was a really well-made movie based on a true story. I'm sure it was not historically accurate, but it was well put together. And it just, it, the, the only flaws was where it rained in that one little spot when he's standing out there in the street. And then when he shot the double barrel shotgun three times. They, <laughs> has Logan, Logan, have you never watched Jeremiah Johnson? I have not even thought about this, but Jeremiah Johnson is almost a required watch for the fans of this channel. <laughs> You're required to watch Jeremiah Johnson gone fishing with Danny Glover and what's his little short man's name? Gone fishing is a necessary watch. You've got to watch that and you got to watch Oh Brother Where Art Thou. <laughs> it's mandatory. No, Jeremiah Johnson is where the guy comes. He he uh he picks up the little boy. He moves into the mountains. He finds a little boy that the woman, all his family got killed except his mama. He takes him and then he he marries an Indian woman by accident. And then whenever the Indian woman and little boy get killed, he goes on a, uh, he fights the Indians from then on for the rest of the movie. But it is a, a really good, good movie. Jeremiah Johnson is a good one. The one with the big bear is uh, 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 The Revenant. That is the story of uh, Hugh Glass. Glenn Forrester, I have to exclude Sling Blade for the same reason I exclude Tombstone. Otherwise, they would definitely be in there, but Sling Blade has got entirely too much profanity in it. Dwight Yoakam, he can make a sailor's face turn blood red. 
and I just, I, I'm to the point, I just can't bear it. I can't, I cannot handle that much profanity. Dances with Wolves is an excellent movie. And y'all, I found a, uh, 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 what was it I bought the other day? Uh, uh, Last of the Mohicans. And I have not even watched it yet. It's laying in there to be watched. Michelle won't let us watch Where the Red Fern Grows. I have got it on DVD in there, but we don't get to watch it or Old Yellow here because she's an animal lover. If your dog dies, it we out. I had to coax her into watching White Fang in here with me the other day with, uh, what's his name, the, the Indiana Jones guy, uh, Ford, Harrison Ford. I had to coax her into watching it and tell her the dog don't die. The dog don't die. Yeah, the man the does. Movie, into the wild or something. Huh? That was Call of the Wild. That's what we was watching. Call of the Wild. And uh, yeah, she didn't. She don't let us watch nothing where the dog dies. Well, we'll see you, Logan. Don't forget to go start watching Andy Griffith. You need to get started on that. We're going to start giving you homework. <laughs> You're going to take a test on it next Friday night. <laughs> We're going to start quoting lines next Friday night from Andy Griffith, and you're going to have to tell us what episode it was on. <laughs> Y'all, it has been a long time since I watched Old Yeller, Linwood. I mean, it's been a long time since I've watched Old Yeller. Cindy, I have got The Count of Monte Cristo in a Penguin Classic paperback in there. I need to read before I watch it. Um, but now it's about yay thick, so it's a little intimidating. There's a little bitty words on them pages, too. Yeah, Jeff, when they start cussing and GDing and all that, I just, I mean, I, I, I could genuinely have enjoyed what you're doing. And then I'm like, that's like the, the cooking with Cajun guy down here in South Louisiana. Great cook. I like his setup, but when he starts with a blankety blank cornbread, I am done with him. I, I mean, why you got to promote that? And there's plenty of folks out there that love it. Uh, you know, they probably a bunch of them like it just because he says that. I'm, and he ain't got a change for me, but it, I ain't watching it. And he's a good cook. I ain't going to talk bad about the guy. From what I've seen, little bits and pieces, because I get tagged in some of his stuff, uh, especially after I made the cornbread and milk video that day. Well, there's a lot of people got sideways with me because I didn't use buttermilk in that milk and cornbread. Y'all, I don't like buttermilk. I ain't uh, buttermilk's for biscuits. I ain't drinking buttermilk. If you like it, more power to you. I don't. <laughs> I ain't mad at you if you like it, but don't tell me it's supposed to be in there because I ain't supposed to put nothing in what I'm drinking that I don't like. <laughs> oh Lord. Sammy, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for joining in. Bonafide. That it is, Ken. It is definitely bonafide. <laughs> well, JL327, what did Barney get arrested for? <laughs> <laughs> and who arrested him? <laughs> oh, Lord. Homemade buttermilk biscuits is where it's at. Larry, I could eat buttermilk biscuits. But I, I did. I made a reel on Instagram with the buttermilk, I mean, with the, the milk and cornbread. And it was after we talked about it on here. And, and I mean, I have piles of people like, it's supposed to be called, you ain't country because it ain't, it ain't buttermilk. And I'm, yeah, okay, whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Y'all imagine somebody telling me I'm not country. 
I guess I'm a city slicker. Jerry Clower, he said that he knew how to let the windlass wind down into the well and not disturb the well. He said he knew how much soda to put in them peas as to get enough to kill every weevil in there but not hurt you if you eat it. He said he was that country. He said, but upside low red Lynn, he is a city slicker. <laughs> yeah. Citizens are raised. Citizens are raised. <laughs> that was one of the funniest episodes, I believe. I I've I have rewound that when I get to it and watch it and laugh till I hurt. Two oh eight a pat for the Bobby Garland. Y'all see Matt Davis's comment, all you fishermen. Crappy Fisherman, Bobby Garland Bates is on sale at Cabela's, 208 a pack. Baby Shad Swim on for $1.98 a pack. Y'all better go to Cabela's and, and check on what they got. Mike, my hat's off to you. He likes buttermilk straight out of the jug. I hope you drink all of it you want. I'm going to let my wife use it to make cat head biscuits <laughs> that thick. I like them biscuits when they stand up tall. You know, I was raised on them drop biscuits. They was good. I eat them every morning. They, they was as good a biscuits ever was, but I like a big, tall, fluffy, look like a cloud you're trying to bite off into. <laughs> <laughs> the buttermilk goes in the cornbread the cornbread don't go in the buttermilk <laughs> yeah yeah there you go Grizzly jigs. I have fished a few grizzly jigs. They are good jigs. Oh. Dude, Martin. <laughs> you know, I heard him talking about them. I don't remember what he was cooking, but he was talking about them, them northerners up there in Baton Rouge. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Justin Wilson was a hoot now. I'm going to tell you. He get to cooking with them onions. He said, I'm going to tell you a story. He had me plum tickled talking about that duck hunting. Now, he done, y'all had to go watch some of it. I can't remember all of his stuff like I do Jerry Clowers, but now he's good. And he's a good cook. But I had an old boy from down in Louisiana that told me he really wasn't even Cajun. Said he just moved down there and went to talking all that stuff because it was good for business. I don't know if that was the truth or not. Or maybe they just did. A lot of times you hear something bad about somebody, but somebody that just don't like them. So I, you, you never know. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know Justin Wilson a whole lot of history on him myself. Salt and pepper in the buttermilk. I'm going to tell you that black pepper goes a long way in a lot of stuff. It is very underrated. And uh, it's one of the things that I'm probably going to add to my seasoning out there that I did not put in there to begin with. And we may do a video for this summer's I on how I make my seasoning because I'm not trying to sell it. I, I've got too many irons in the fire to start trying to peddle seasoning. Everybody else that does a little cooking on YouTube has got to make their own seasoning and try to sell it. I'd just soon show you what I put in mine and be done with it. <laughs> I ain't greedy. That's probably why I'll always be broke, Reagan. But I'm broke and happy. Two-inch power grubs. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I had not never really just nailed down one bait that I thought was a number one bait. that I, That's what I had to fish with. They, because whenever they biting, you put loaf bread on the hook and they'll bite it. 
And if it ain't biting, you can try everything in a tackle box. And if you get lucky and they do happen to start biting a little bit or you catch one or two, you'll swear that's the best bait there is. And it could have been a fluke, you know, because everybody's got a different one that they swear is the number one bait you got to have. And everybody be fishing the same late. Ten fishermen, and they got ten different number one baits that they catch the most on. So that tells me a lot. <laughs> but now they are, I favor some natural colors and i'm gonna be honest with you i've had some of my best look on the strike king the the old strike king uh mr crappie them pole shads got the little ball on the end of the tail now, i sit here and tell you that it's the best bait gonna work i mean i've caught them on everything hand tied hair jigs to everything five forks in the back of uncle versus hand yeah that is a good one right there. Get interviewed on the Duck Call Room podcast. Don't get me set up. I'll go talk with them. I need to get on Unfiltered with Phil Robertson. That's where I need to. I need to sit down in that room right across from Phil Robertson and let's talk about the Lord. <laughs> I, I like the Robertsons. I really do. I have watched a lot of their stuff. My daughter, she's got their show binge watching in there right now for the birds. She said, don't turn my TV off. She said, the birds like to hear it. She's got two birds in there in a the cage. You get to yapping. She's got one bird. Oh, what happened to the other one? It's, it died several years ago. Wow. I guess it went along with the duck that died last year. I'll be glad when the other two's gone. Hey, them ducks is nasty. You can't keep that water or the pen clean. It don't matter what you put in there. I don't like a duck. Tater in the moped. I think they hinting around they want to hear a Jerry Cliver joke. <laughs> Didn't you listen to him today? I listened to I listened to Jerry Clow with part of the afternoon, me and I was trying to get Brody turned on to him. They got to talking about old highball. You see, old highball was the best coon dog ever was, and said somebody got to popping off about that dog was better than old highball. Said old Marcel Ledbetter wrote him a letter and says they ain't no better coon dog than highball. He said, I don't care what you say. He said, Don't you ever tell nobody that there was. We don't believe it, none. So they got together. They was going to have a, a, a hunt off because they done got to say, this fella will catch more coons in, a, in one night than y'all will. Said it's just a fact. He's done done it. So said they got to meet up up there. Said they set up a hunt one night and they all got together. They was going to hunt. Said Marcel was there. Said he had old highball. And said Clovis was there with old June. Said this fella pulled up. Said he dropped the tailgate down in his truck. Said there's this big old cage up in there. And said they look and said up in that cage was a monkey. And, and said Marcel said uh uh uh. Said don't don't no uh. Uh-uh. Said don't let that thing out of there. Said he, he looks too much like folks. And they said well said we need one good coon dog to go with the monkey. And said. You'll catch more coons in a night's hunt. Said the hides are expensive. And and Marcel, he said, I ain't taking my dog with that trashy thing. So Clovis, he said, I'll take old June and we'll go. Said, so they got ready to go and said, the man opened the cage and said, out come that monkey. Said he had a flashlight in one hand and said he had a pistol in the other. And said, man, he run around on the ground and Said they turned old June, Lo- June loose. Said she'd run out there a little ways, struck a trail. Said about that time she treed. <laughs> said they got down into there. Said the man unsnapped the chain on that monkey and said he took off and run up the side of that tree, boogity, 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 all the way to the top. Said pistol in one hand, flashlight in the other. Said he run back and forth out on every limb and said the art of being a good coon dog is to circle the tree and make for sure that the coon's up there if you say is there because a lot of times a coon will tap the tree. In other words, he'll run out on a limb, hop into another tree, out and run out on a limb, hop into another tree, and then come down on the ground way off out there and get away. Well, old June's treed up this thing, said monkey done run out every limb, shining, shining that light. Said what he does, said he runs out there and finds the coon and shoots him out right up there with that pistol. 
Said, but this monkey ain't found no coon. Said he come down that tree, stuck that pistol up to old June's head and thumb, cocked it, whoom, said this killed old June graveyard dead. Said Clovis, said, oh, said this trashy thing has killed my dog. Said that man, said Clovis, said there ain't but one thing that that monkey hates worse than a raccoon, and that's a lion coon dog. Deaver, you like to watch old Kent Rollins. Old Kent Rollins is a show enough fine cook. Hey. hey. Oh, Della. Yeah, said I was. The old fella said he called Jerry, said, uh, said I want to go hunting. Jerry asked, said, what kind of hunting you want to do? He said, I want to go bird hunting, quail. He said, oh, man, said some of the finest quail hunting ever was is down here in South Mississippi. He said, you fly in, he said, and we'll go. Said the man flew in, come from way out in California. Landed at Jackson, Jerry picked him up, took him down out of the beautiful, beautiful Versa Ledbetter farm. Said he told the fella, he said, look, said I'm going to go in here and tell Uncle Versa that we're going to be hunting on his place. Said he walked in there, Uncle Versa, how you doing? Said Uncle Versa, said, oh, son, said, glad to see you. Said, been a long time since you've been here. And he said, he said, Said, what are y'all doing? He said, well, we're going to go quail hunting. He said, oh, said there's three or four coveys of birds between here and the road. Said, I hope y'all kill a bunch of them. He said, well, all right. Said, I appreciate it, Uncle Versa. He said, by the Uncle Versa. <laughs> said, I hate to do it. Said, I, I got to ask you to do something for me. He said, well, what is it, Uncle Versa? He said, it's old Della, my mule. Said, made 40 good crops with her, but. Veterinarian was out here yesterday and said she's dying. He said, I didn't have the heart to let him put her down yesterday. And said, would you shoot her for me? He said, well, Uncle Versa, he said, I don't like to do it, but said she's suffering. Said, I'll, I'll do it for you. He said, just shoot her and said, me and the boys will tend to her late this evening. Said, we'll dig a hole and bury her. He said, just shoot her and y'all go on hunting. He walked out the door and he said, he said, I'm finna have me some fun out of this Hollywood dude. <laughs> he said, I jumped in the truck and he said, I beat the dashboard with my fence. Said, you said, no. Said, you won't believe what he's told me. He said, good as I've been to him, he's told me, no, get you and that Hollywood city slicker out from him. He said, and I scratched off and slung rocks upside Uncle Versus' house took off down the driveway and he said, slammed on brakes out there, said stood old Della Graves and out there and he said, I slammed on brakes, slid to a stop, jumped out with my shotgun and said, boom, boom, down old Della went, graveyard dead. He said, and just as I turned around to see what the dude thought, I heard three shots over there, boom, boom, boom. I said, fella, what are you doing? He said, Jerry, that old man upset you so bad I killed three of his cows. <laughs> Jeff Gray, I ain't seen you in a while, son. Where you been? <laughs> Oh, Deaver, I like that old man. He he's a good cook. He's a good guy. I don't have no problem with supporting good folks. I don't be supporting folks that, that do a lot of bad stuff. But oh oh, uh, he don't need my help. Kent Kent Rollins. Hey, probably everybody on here done heard of him. <laughs> 
But I do like him. If I'm going to watch barbecuing or grilling or outdoor cooking, I, he's one of the ones that I'm going to pull up as far as modern day cooks. If I, But now it, it doesn't got to be too big of a production. I, I'm not a huge fan of, of big channels. There's very few big channels that I'll watch faithfully, and one of them is on right up there right now. I think, yeah. That fella up there reeling that fishing reel is as good as they get. If you ain't watching Richard Gene, the fishing machine, you are just slam missing out. <laughs> my, my iPad keep every time I lean over it goes. Yeah, it does come in on a lead better, a lead better story. Done as little as possible. I'm I'm all for that. I can't figure out how to do it though. John, you got a point there. If a man likes dogs, he's got to be some good in him somewhere. Yep. <laughs> the other said I'm talking about woo. <laughs> oh Lord, y'all know about Elmo. <laughs> What y'all know about Elmo? He got them old long hairs on his nose. <laughs> Tell me what all y'all know about Elmo. <laughs> we'll find out how much you watch Richard Jean when you. <laughs> Talk about Brody playing with his little men and his feet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we got out here. Brody's well, he bought a bass boat up here last year at the co-op. It's, I mean, them things is expensive now, a little old plastic bass, but you used to get them at Walmart, but this one's a little fancy. It had a little man in it with a fishing pole and a fish, you know. He's out there playing with them the other day, and we got to listen to him, and he was saying, it's Richard Jean. <laughs> so they go to town yesterday. Michelle and Brody and her mama had to go to the ship all them cups that we sent out. And they coming home, and they got behind a man pulling a boat. And Brody said in, is that Richard Gene, the fishing machine? They <laughs> said, I don't think so. He said, follow them. <laughs> they followed that boat <laughs> from town all the way to where they turned off the highway to come down our road. <laughs> and Brody was standing up, you're losing them. Hey, when they'd go around the curve, he'd say, catch up with them. He thought it was Richard Gene, the fishing machine. He's going to see who it was. <laughs> so I have officially ruined the boy. But it's all right. We've earned him in a good way. About the little boy and the squirrel hunting. Yeah, they was a. Uh, uh, they went and decided to go squirrel hunting. It was late in the year, and uh, they got out there in the woods and said they wasn't seeing hardly any squirrels. And said they sat down under some. Oak trees down there, the acorns are still dropping on, and it was done late in the year. And said they sat there for two hours, hadn't seen nothing. So they got up and was started out of the woods and said, Here come along a boy walking up this branch. And, and uh, said, Man said he had a piece of a plow line tied around his waist and said, Them squirrel tails is a hanging out from under it. Said, Look like a squirrel tail hula dress. Said he was just popping them heads up under that piece of plow line. And, Said the man, asked, said, said, hey, boy, I said, well, where'd you get all them squirrels? Said, you ain't even got a gun. He said, no, nah. I said, he picked up a rock he had in his hand. He said, it was about the half the size of a pool ball. And he said, I throw this rock at him. And that man said, well, look, said, there's a squirrel right over yonder in that leaf. Said, I'm seeing right down there. Said, show us how you do it. Said the boy went down there and rolled back left-handed and chunked that rock and said, knocked him right out. Man said, why? Said, son, you've done good. Said, and left-handed too, ain't you? He said, oh, no, I'm not. He said, I'm right-handed. He said, well, you throwing that rock left-handed? He said, well, my papa makes me throw left-handed. He said, why is that? He said, because if I throw it right-handed, I tear them up too bad. <laughs> they, was, they went hunting one day. Said they got to bragging down at their store about who had the best bird dog. Said all these two fellas said they went on and on and on about who had the best quail dog. 
Well, they decided they was going to have a hunt off is the way they done. Said, well, there was people gathered all around that Saturday morning. They got down there and hunted and said, Mark for Mark said they hunted. Said every time one dog would get a bird, said then the other would get a bird. Said they, end of the day, said they had 14 birds and said they was tied seven and seven. And said, man, said they, they were just pointing them birds. Said both dogs was good. Said, well, they were still arguing about which one had the best dog. And said, about that time, one of them dogs said, both of them pointed this boy over there. And they said, well, they run up to him and said, well, said, have you got a quail in your pocket? He said, no, sir. They said, well, have you dressed a quail today? He said, no, sir. He said, have you handled a quail today? He said, no, sir. He said, well, these dogs has pointed you and they... Quail dog, he said, well, what is your name? He said, Bob White. <laughs> Small channels is better. I do agree. I do agree. I like to support the small Jeff Gray, if you've not seen Richard Gene, the fishing machine, you are missing out big time. He's entertaining, and he's about as good a fisherman as they are as far as freshwater fishing. Now, he talks about some saltwater fishing days when he lived in Florida, but now I have not seen him do any, fresh, any saltwater fishing, and I have yet to seen him catch both in, as we know Grunnell. Oh, uh, I'd love to turn him on to some gruntal. I think he, I think he'd be fun to watch catch a gruntal. <laughs> he'd probably try it with two pound test line. I feel sure. Real country, Jeff and Melanie. I, I ain't sure that there's very many Jerry Clower tales that I have not heard. Oh, uh, I just, I grew up on it. That was, that was one of the, as a young boy, I had every cassette tape of his that there was, and I've still got some of them. Some of them got lost over the years, and they some that I can't find anymore. So I do know that there's a few jokes that I heard, but I can't remember. Oh, uh, Cause they kind of rare. There's some stuff I think he must have told early on. Um, I I never had the pleasure of meeting him or knowing a whole lot about him other than just listening to his tales growing up. And I fell in love with his tales because they were clean and uh and and they were legitimately funny, but they related to a lot of life that I grew up around. I mean, it was just country living and. I understood it, and that that I just sat with me. I I I can't sit here and remember all of them. But when people ask about one, I'm like, oh yeah, I rem and it might. I probably don't tell them exactly like he does. Which, if you tell something good, you kind of have to put your own spin on it to really get into it. But Uncle Versi and the piece of chicken. The piece of chicken, well, y'all ever heard of swapping work? Well, it said it, it's hard to pull a cross-cut saw by yourself. And said, I'll, said, I'll, I had to have help. Said, there wasn't nobody, me and my brother Sonny, and said, when he was gone, said, I couldn't cut the firewood. Said, I had Marcel come over there and help me cut firewood, he said, and I was over there swapping back some work, helping them dig a hand-dug well. And he said, and the digging a dug well is hard work. He said, and we come up out of there for supper, and said, they said, Jerry, you stay and eat supper with us. And he said, I was there eating supper, and said, and they was all there, Uncle Aunt Pet and Uncle Versi, and said, and all of them, R. Dale, Burnell, Ray Nail, W. L. Nail, O. Dale, U. Dale, Ma Sell, Claude, New Jean, and Clovis, and said, we was eating supper. And said, 
window was open there on said they had a lamp lit in the middle and said they'd cooked a big old pan of fried chicken and said man we was all sitting around there we had done eat two whole fried chickens and he said mashed potatoes and gravy and said ain't pet had cooked up a fine meal but said they was one piece of chicken left on that platter up there and said we all had fine christian teachings and it said everybody was eyeballing that last piece of chicken and wanting it bad, but said wasn't nobody going to reach and get that last piece of chicken. Said about that time a wind come, said the window was open and blew the lamp out. And said that no sooner than that lamp had went out, said Uncle Versus screamed out, said you'd have thought he'd been killed. And said Aunt Pet jumped up, went to fumbling around with the matches and got the lamp lit. Said when Aunt Pet got the lamp lit, said there was five forks in the back of Uncle Versus' hand. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Versus done reached for that piece of chicken when the light went out and everybody else went after it with a fork. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Keith, it's hard to, to find a clean comedian that, that's not, you know, that's actually funny. But it can be done. <laughs> old Ma Sale, yeah, said old Ma Sale said he didn't like at school none. And said he didn't want to go, but said Uncle Verse had made him go to school long enough till he got his driver's license and said Ma Sale got him an old secondhand putwood truck. Said he was over in the edge of Macomb there. Said he was cutting pup wood. And said he was driving home late that evening. Said it hot summer. Said he was in his old pup wood truck headed home. Said the sun was just going down. Said it was hot. And he said they over in the other county. Said the county there where they was at was dry. Said they'd never voted in any alcoholic beverages. But said you could drive over across the county line where they had a joint if you wanted a cool beer. It said, Ma Sale had fine Christian teachings. He knew better than to buy any of them cool beers, but he said he knew also that they had them big knee-high soda waters. It said he wanted him one of them knee-high belly washers bad. It said he pulled his old putwood wood truck over on the side of the road when he went by and walking across the parking lot his bare feet said all Ma Sale had on between him and the Lord was a pair of overalls. It said that was it, nothing else, no shoes, nothing but a pair of overalls. Said he did have the top button button, uh, the bottom button button, but said the top button was flopping. It said he walked up there to the door and said they had an old screen door on the front of the place and said Marcel just didn't want to go into no beer joint, so he hollered through the screen door. He said, hey, said that man, said, what you want? He said, would you hand me a cold soda water? He said, I'll pay you for it and pay you for the old bottle and I'll drink it driving home. And the man said, boy, you better get away from that door. He said, we don't want the likes of you in here. He said, I ain't coming in. He said, I just hand it through the door and I'll pay you for it and I'll drink it driving home. He said, you better go on and get you a shirt on, get you some clothes on. He said, poor Ma Sale said, one of them fellas sitting over there was playing this him boo ray card game. So one of them said, didn't you hear him telling you to get away from that door, you redneck? So old Ma Sale dropped his head and said he's walking across that parking lot and them old gravels on his feet. Said he walked by that footwood truck. Said he reached over in the toolbox and took hold of that lightweight McCullough chainsaw. Said he grabbed that start and wrote and said, vroom, 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 vroom. Said old Ma Sale walked up and said he just stuck a snout of that thing right up through that screen door and said, wham, 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 wham. Said he hung it in the side of that door and said, wham. Said made them screen wars and hinges and things come loose. Said he just reamed them out a hole in that screen door. Said old Ma Sale stepped inside. Said he raised that chainsaw up over his head and revved it up. Wham, 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 wham. Said they gave Ma Sale a beard joint. Said old Ma Sale was in there and said hey, you could ease up to the door and hear him in there. Look, 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 look. Said he was a chugging them knee-high belly washers. He said the man that owned that place said he stuck his head around the corner in that door and said Ma Sale reached over there and grabbed that chainsaw and said, Wop, ma, bum, bum. said they gave Ma Sale the beard joint again.
some of them stories is some classics. They just hard to beat. I can sit and probably tell them about half a night, but they <laughs> it's hard to tell them as good as Jerry Cloward tells them now. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody was talking about cooking shows. God's Country Hunting and Fishing is a good channel. I seen somebody talking about Whippoorwill Holler. Michelle watches Whippoorwill Holler a good bit. I, I ain't just big on it because it's more the lady cooking and uh, it's more what she's into, but that, that is a good channel. I've watched a little of it, but I hadn't heard of God's Country Hunting and Fishing. Have you heard of it, Michelle? Uh -uh. I will have to check that one out. Jeff, you said Chris Stewart and Jerry Clow will come to visit his class in elementary school. That is cool. He took the Hollywood dude uh, bird hunting. I just told that one. Just, you must have just missed it because we just got through with that. Where they shot old, old Della the Mule. Wendy Bagwell is good. Wendy Bagwell, did, how many of y'all have done went and listened to the Volkswagen story? I have mentioned, I can't tell it. It's good. I wish I could tell it as good. If I could tell it as good as Wendy Bagwell, I'd tell it. I know most of it, but I don't know it as well as I should to, to tell it. But old Wendy Bagwell tells one about the Volkswagen when they went and bought that Volkswagen. And y'all, <laughs> you, if you've never heard that, you need to find that somewhere. And I don't know if it's on, I, I want to think it's on YouTube. But it's, I guess it's known as the Volkswagen story. But I laughed at it. Now it's about as good as they get. Telling about the snake handling church, yeah. <laughs> he, Wendy Bagwell said they was up there on the platform singing and said he seen them boxes over there and he said he knew he said he knew do something wasn't right, but he said when they said they said this woman said they'd come up there and dance and said they he said when they started shouting, he said I knew something was odd. He said because a lot of these churches they don't shout no more. He said used to everybody shouted. He said now they don't nobody shout. He said but they got to shouting in there. And he said they got they shouted right on up on the platform with us. And he said there's this woman and she shouted right on around behind us. And he said I was trying to watch her out of the corner of my eye and said sure enough said she reached over in one of them boxes and come out with this big long rattlesnake. Said she has hugged all up to that thing. And he said, I done leaned over there and said, told, said, uh, uh, said, we fixing to have to find a back door to this place. And she said, there ain't no back door. He reckon where they want one. <laughs> said, said, she has come around and said, all hugged up to that lovely thing. <laughs> oh, Lord. He said, I, he said, I figured, he said, I asked her, what would you have done if she'd have handed you that thing? He said, he said, I feel like that, that snake knew she is in the spirit. He said, and I feel like that snake knew I wouldn't. <laughs> Waltz back and... See you. You'd have got me on that, Jeff, because I don't. I don't know nothing, nothing but in German. But uh, when Eve was here, we my brother and them had an exchange student from Germany, Eve, and she taught us a little bit of German. But I don't remember none of it. We do still keep up with them, though. I follow them on Instagram and Facebook. I think.
Yeah. Eric and Barbara Fleming said, no bam, hot steel balls. Yeah, I was I was when his brother Sonny said he liked to play hooky and said he skipped school and helped him build a highway one year. <laughs> when he said they was helping them work on them bulldozers and said they done found some of them big steel ball bearings and he said, man, said one of the main most sports in was marbles. And he said, well, my brother Sonny come to school with them steel ball bearings and said, man, we got out there playing marbles. Said, I done busted up the game. He said, <laughs> he said, you, he said, you, he, he said, if you played marbles, he said, you got down there and drawed a big circle in the dirt. He said, you got down there with the tall or the aggie, we called it. He said, you hit them marbles and said, however many you knocked out was yours and you could keep them if your mama didn't find out. And he said he'd come to school with five of them big steel ball bearings, and he said he'd give me three of them. said, I got down there and said, man, I done busted up the game. said, old Ben, D. Lauder said he is as mean as any young'un ever was in school. said, I was scared of him as I was a bear. He said he commenced beating on me. He said, I want you to give me one of them steel ball bearings. He said, I can't do it, Ben. said he commenced beating on me, and the bell rung, and we run up in the school, and he said, I death. He said, I didn't know what in the world I was going to do. He said, oh, Ben, said after school, I knew he was going to beat me to death, take them ball bearings. And he said, I was sitting there thinking, and he said, and I got to looking, and he said, and I went back out of the stove like I was cold. And he said, I laid them steel ball bearings up on there. And he said, I let them get hot. I mean, forever more scalding hot. He said, and then I went back there with my Red Rider gloves on. Said they had that little bit of fringe right there on the side. You know, said they had Red Rider's picture right up on the back of them. Said Santa Claus had done brought them to me. He said, and I went back there with them Red Rider gloves on and picked them hot steel ball bearings up. Said I brought them up there and said, I laid them in that trench right up there at the top of your desk where your pencil goes. Right there beside that hole in your desk where the ink bottle went. Said we never did have no ink. And said, then I went and shot my pencil. He said, no Ben seen them ball bearings laying up there on my desk. And said, he had a rat, brand new pair of overhauls on. Said, he leaned over there and said, he just kind of squatted down and raked them off in his back pocket. Said, he went back there and sat down, you know, like he wasn't up to nothing. Said, when he sat down, he said, ah! Said he got to jumping up and down, said in that death, said he hung in that death, said he was a jumping up and down, said he has overgrown anyhow. He done been in the eighth grade eight times. And said Miss Bentley Stone come back there and went to beating on Ben, said, Hush, Ben, said, What's the matter with you? You got ants in your pants? He said, No, ma'am, hot steel balls. <laughs> <laughs> you got about Roscoe liked that one, y'all. Come here, Roscoe. Sonny and the ship run. That, that was the 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 the, the, sh the sh yes. <laughs> Sonny and the ship rope. I forgot about that one. <laughs> I don't know if I remember exactly how all it went. Said he. Uh, I, I knew. Said we said it cold in the winter time, and said we lived in that one room. You know, me and my brother Sonny just had one room back there, and said we shared a bed and. Said, I'd have to go in there with it cold and get up in that bed. Said, my brother Sonny would wait till I got to bed warm. And said, then he'd come running and run down the hall. And said, he'd dive across the room in the dark and land right up in the middle of my back. And he said, one night, said, I'd done waited him out long as I could. I done got so sleepy I couldn't keep my eyes open. He said, and I felt my way down the hall in there. He said, I was about scared of the dark anyway. And said, he said, I felt. Felt right there where the ship robe was. He said, there was a bed right there. Mama had done rearranged the furniture. And he said, over there where the bed was, was now was the ship robe. And he said, I, I eased around there and I got in the bed. And he said, I was laying there. And he said, I got to thinking. and said, I wonder if my brother Sonny knows Mama has rearranged the furniture. And he said, by that time, I heard his feet pop, 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 pop. said, here he come running down a hall. And he said, well, all of a sudden, he left the ground and said, sounded like he was in the, in the air for over a minute. And said, by that time, it was an awfulest crash you ever heard. Whoa! Said, just busted up his ship robe. Said, 
We pick splinters out of him and dob him a cure chrome to daylight. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Roscoe had done come join the party. Wendy Bagwell and the old yellow cat. Now, I hadn't, Robin, I ain't heard the one about the old yellow cat. I sure ain't heard it. Uh, I've heard about Wilbur Wingate's weenie. <laughs> Said Wilbur Wingate had a weenie. Someone filled it full of sand. Wilbur Wingate's weenie wound up in the bottom of the can. <laughs> Marcel led better moving company. Said Marcel has always been in several kind of businesses trying to make a living and Said one time he got into the moving business. Said a lady called, said, sir, can you move a piano? He said, yes, ma'am. Said he got over to the house and said it was a three-story house. And said it had a big bay window up on the third story. Said they'd got the piano in there and fixed the door some way. And they couldn't get the piano back out. And said they didn't have enough of folks to tote it. Said Marcel said, I know what I'll do. Said he got him a big block and tackle and said he got up on top of the house and nailed it sticking out over the house and got him a block and tackle and tied it on that tube of six. And said he run the rope in there and said run one end in the bay window and tied it around that piano real good and said he got his James Lewis's heifer down there on the ground and now I got his James Lewis name up there to help get the piano out the window and said Marcel got down there on the ground on the other end of that rope and said done wrapped it round his arm. He said, all right now, shove it out easy and I'm going to ease it down. And said James Lewis and his helper, they got out there and said they eased that went piano up to the window, eased it out the window and they said just as that thing left the ledge, it started down and Marcel started up, had that rope round his arm. Said he passed that piano about halfway up up there in his head, hit that pulley. Whoom! Said the piano hit the ground. Wow! Just busted into a thousand pieces. Splinters covered the whole street. Said Marcel's head hit that pulley up there. Whoom! Said down he fell backside right out in the middle of all that busted up piano. Said James Lewis and his heifer come running down the stairs. Said Marcel! Marcel said he slapped him, said, speak to me, speak to me, Marcel. Said Marcel opened his eyes and said, why should I speak to you? Said, I just passed you twice up there and you didn't say nothing. <laughs> but old, old Marcel and his brother, New Gene, said they was setting up with the dead one night. Said, folks don't set up with the dead, said, no more, but. Said they all got in there and said they, they now they come and make this announcement, said, Oh, the funeral home will be closing at ten PM. We will reopen at seven AM in the morning. And said Uncle Versus said, Will you go on right ahead and close, do whatever you gotta do? But said, Now we're not gonna leave Uncle's eyes him by himself. Said, My two boys is gonna set up with him, said they'll be right here. They won't be bothering nothing. Said, you go on, lock up, do what you got to do. They're going to be sitting right here with him, with my friend. Said, they are sitting there and said, New Gene and Ma Sales sitting there looking out the window and said they could see a sign flickering across the street. Said, one of them beer joints. And said, they got thirsty and said, said Ma Sales said, I think I'm on ease over there and get us a drink and I'll bring it back. Said Eugene, said, uh-uh. Said, you're not leaving me in here with him. He, he said, I'll go and you stay here with Uncle Zias and, and I'll go over there and get us something to drink. And said Marcel, said, uh-uh. Said, you're not leaving me in here with him either. Said, said I didn't heard there's four more down the hall. Said, they sat there. Said, man, they was looking across the street. Said, Got to smacking. They said their mouth got dry as cotton sitting there. Said finally they just decided they was going to both go to the beer joint and just take a dead man with them. Said they armed him up, put him right in there between them and said they kind of 
tied their feet together, said every now and then they'd drop him down and let one foot drag and they'd cross the street where it looked like he was just stepping right along with them. <laughs> said they got up in that beer joint and said they kind of wedged him up in a bar stool right up in there between them, kind of propped him up. Said they were sitting there drinking a cold beer or drinking soda waters or something. I don't remember. I think he was drinking soda water, but they was up in a beer joint. Said about that time a fist fight broke out. I mean, said fist was flying, bar stools cracking, said they was throwing, I mean, all out fist fight. And said about that time somebody took a fist and hit Uncle Zeiss right upside the head, knocked him off that bar stool right out the floor. Said the police come in there and busted it all up and broke it up, said they was arresting them and said New Gene looked over there and seen Uncle Zeiss down in the floor and said he just fell down there and said, oh, said I, he said, you hit him. You hit him. I seen you when you hit him. You killed him. You did it. <laughs> said the fellow looked at him and he said, well, said I'll admit I did hit the fellow. He said, but it was self-defense. He pulled a pocket knife on me. <laughs> I got a brown one in there too that come out, but my brown one, y'all, has streaked all up. There must have not been much coffee left. <laughs> I was expecting a full cup, if not half full. I'll be honest with y'all, I have done drank coffee all day today because it was raining and I come in wet with the chills. Well, I don't reckon I really had the chills, but I was about like a drowned rat when I come in. And uh, went out there and I made a pot of coffee out there in the shed and drank it. I didn't I didn't drink enough coffee that I'm like old Carl said. He said it makes me nervous when I drink it. Yeah, what y'all think about my cup? I got a brown one I made, but I made the handle a lot narrower. I, I'm a fan of these bigger handles, so I'm I'm still experimenting with making these cups. I have, that's the first ones I have made, but I I do like coffee. I drink a lot of it, probably too much of it. Yeah, Roscoe, he's he's home now. He's at, where you going, son? You ain't got to get him. I think he thought I was finna. Run him off. No. Oh no, his mama went in the kitchen. She she took off in the kitchen and he he decided that he needed to go check, make sure she wasn't into the groceries. <laughs> he'd be sound asleep and hear a fork hit a plate and boom, he'd lick it his split. He's on the floor and in there to see what is going on. He's got to investigate. Yeah, uh, John, I am a fan of a cup being bigger at the bottom than it is at the top. And sadly, with most coffee mugs nowadays, it is right the opposite. Which, and I understand, they think they're making them where they'll fit in a cup holder in your truck. Well, it's, for me personally, it's very rare that I'm using a cup holder in a truck. Occasionally, I do. But I like a, when they going to make one of them stainless steel vacuum sealed cups, we'll just call it for safety's sake, that's wider on the bottom than it is at the top, because I'd buy one tomorrow. You know, Aladdin made a, a cup, and I got one. I don't know right where it's at. It's probably put up somewhere because we've got so many cups. But I have got a insulated mug that is bigger on the bottom, but. I don't know what I, it's come up amiss. It's in a cabinet somewhere. Yeah, Cindy, it's it's funny how them dogs, when they hear a, a dish rattle, man, they boom. Roscoe can be sound asleep at the foot of the bed under the cover, and he'll take the cover off of you to get up out of there to come in here and see what's going on in the kitchen. <laughs> they know that's where the food is. A volcano grape travel mug. Spill proof mugs. That's a good name for them. 
Yeah, I, I've got one, and I tell you what, I had seen one years ago. They were some plastic ones that I seen somebody had, and then I found one at the flea market up here in town back in the fall. Me and Michelle was walking through the flea market one day, and um, I I wound up paying I think ten dollars for it. I and I, it hey, y'all, it must have been in rough place because. It took me forever to scrub the smoke smell out of it. It smelled like cigarette smoke. Somebody probably been smoking them once ones about ye long in there while they had it. And we I scrubbed tried to talk about getting it. it. I just wanted it so bad because that I hadn't seen very many of them. It's the only one I have seen in years. And Michelle was like, don't buy that. And I kept walking around. I left it there. And we got all the way to the truck. And I was like, I, I want that mug. She said, well, go get it. So I walked all the way back in there and bought that mug. And y'all, I know we washed it four or five times in scald in hot and water. And let it soak. And let it sit there and soak with smoke in it. Or and was he soaked still in it. out of it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, we got it clean enough. But y'all, it did take several washings to get that smoke smell out of it or whatever. It smelled like smoke to me. I, well, it was kind of like it had been sitting up for yeah, a it, long time. It was made back in the 80s. Where it had a name on it. Like the sticker on it was an old Walmart sticker. that, And the Walmart brand looked like. Yeah, it did have a Walmart sticker on the bottom of it. And it's got the, the foam on the bottom of it. Y'all have seen it in videos. I had it. The boat deck comments what prompted me that because in that. Well, I don't think you've seen this video yet because I. I took it with me the other day when I filmed a video. I hadn't put this video out. When I went to Bluff Lake, I carried my Yeti coffee thermos and that little cup, and I had it sitting on my boat deck right there by me while I was fishing, <laughs> drinking coffee. Um, so, yeah, they work good sitting on anything. Moving. I'll tell you what I personally like them for. None of my cups fit in my Polaris Ranger cup holder up there because they're bigger to top. Well, it's wedged up against the dash, and they all put in wompy angled caddy wampus you call it this i can set it right up there on the dash and it'll ride we rode all over the swamp the other day me and michelle did one afternoon and i had took i had goldenrod tea made and i carried it with me down there drinking it and uh it'll ride and that's what i like about it you can set them on the dash they'll sit on the console between me and the pickup truck they'll sit on the boat and for me instead of me putting coffee in a a coffee cup, like insulated coffee cup with a lid and all on it, that's the most practical thing to do. I like drinking out of a regular cup and then putting my coffee in an insulated thermos to really keep it hot and pour it in here and it cools down enough I can drink it. In that insulated coffee mug, you go to take a sip of it and it's so hot, it burns your lips. When you pour it in here, it cools down enough that it ain't scalding you. But yeah, we're going we to make some more of these and probably you can get this one for a small phenomenal fee for it's said and done. But I am, they're not perfect yet. I'm still working on perfecting the making of them. So I've got about what? There's about two more out there that we've got to glaze. Mm -hmm. Go, where's the other one at? The brown one. What'd I do with it? I'll let you see what the brown one looks like. Oh, uh, if Roscoe don't come running by and step in it. The brown one I made, I got the handle. I guess it's personal preference. And this is a color I'm shooting for that I wanted for a man of color, but now I don't know if y'all can tell in this light. I painted it, Michelle said, with the wrong brush because I painted this one myself instead of letting her paint it. And it's got streaks in it because I used a different brush. I don't like them brushes she uses. They're just aggravating. And I don't know if you can tell, but they have some streaks in the glaze up and down like this. You really can't tell. It looks rusty. It's, it's not bad. It just, but the handle on this one, you can see, is a lot thinner than the other one. And it is because I am experimenting on how I want to make them, but now I personally think I like the big fat handle myself. I have got to master the round in it. My handles, 
making these handles and attaching them is an art form within itself and then making this cup I don't know of anybody that makes them like I make them. Uh, most everybody wheel throws pottery, so everything is rounded. These have square, squared off edges, you can see. And then this one, I don't know if you can tell, look. It is signed, Spirit of the Outdoors has my signature on it. Everything. I made sure they knew this one. I can't turn. This one just has the Southern Mud Pottery stamp on it. So anyway, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Philip, I got one of them Aladdin cups somewhere. I don't know right where it's at. Well, Pa Joe, it has is. It took me several years to get good at it, but when you don't want to have to do metal roofing, you'll figure out how to do about anything that comes available. So that's what it amounts to. I was sick of that hot metal roofing in the summer. Now, right now, it ain't too bad. This is a good time of year to be doing it, and in the fall. But now, it is hot. They said name them Fat Bottom Mugs. Ugly mugs and fat bottom mugs. That works. Uh, and and this one right here is in blue tick. <laughs> Somebody last week called it blue tick. My wife just got on to me for burping. Y'all gonna ever forgive me if you can deeply find it in your heart to forgive me. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I know they somebody said that old boy ain't right and I ain't. <laughs> Never will be. Brown handle butter. You like the thinner handle, Larry? Mark Mel said the five second rule when food falls on the floor is moot when you got a three second dog like Roscoe. Hey, Roscoe catch it before it hits the floor. If you drop food with Roscoe, he's sitting there eyeballing you, and I promise you, it never hits the floor. Unless he happens to be over here already eating something, and it hits the floor. But if he's sitting there watching me eat, and I drop something, because every night I be eating to see him, and I just kind of pitch something over the side, you know. I don't let him lick my fingers when I'm eating, you know. A lot of people want to hand it to him. I, I don't I don't want no dog licking my fingers when I'm eating. I, I really don't like no dog licking me no time. Some folks, you know, they... Don't do that. That's, that's personal. I, I don't like the dog licking all over me. Roscoe's over there done got the Cordovas. He's a sneezing and whatnot. I'm loading his face. No, Michelle's over there torturing him. I heard him over there snotting. Huckleberry squirrel season was over in the end of February, but now we have a spring season that opens at some point for a little while that's got a little different rule. I hadn't looked it up, but there is a spring season here now. Oh, there was last year. I hadn't looked this year to see. We may not have it this year, but we did. Of a kettle? Yeah. I ain't thought about that. Jeff said it reminds him of a kettle. No, the Sasquatch. <laughs> I got you. Do you like case knives? Yeah, I like case knives. I got. I, I have no problem with case knives. Oh, uh, I favor. Well, that ain't a case. This is a Texas Matador Makers. This is the Road Runner. Oh, uh, the Texas Matador. You can't see that. It is a maker's more, more maker. However, you just got the road running and it's got Arizona. But this is a case. Y'all know I'd be, I be liking these. And y'all, I did a reel the other day. 
Have I done a video scaling fish for this yet? I know I did it in a reel. I think I did a video. But anyway, these fish scalers, y'all, I have done used several different kind of fish scalers. I have used a spoon. I have used a pressure nozzle on the water hose. The pressure nozzle works good as long as you don't mind getting wet. Now, you may can do it and not get wet. If I use a pressure nozzle and blow the scales off, I, I wind up soaking wet. But that fish scaler is by far the best thing I have ever used because the scales don't just go and go everywhere. You can take that thing and rake right up under them if you lay it down like that, and they'll just stay right there. You just kind of rake them off the fish. Ah, uh, hey. But anyway, that is a, got a hook sharpener. And then there's got one, and these are a little shorter than the, the queen, but they make a bigger one. I was looking, there's where it says case on that blade. But I do, I like case knives. Uh, but now, I'm not one of these like brand picky people on most things. There are a few brands that I... Like fishing reels, I like Abu Garcia. I don't know why, it's just kind of what I've always fished with cause I started out with an Abu Garcia. But now y'all, I have got several different fishing reels. I have never fished with a loose fishing reel. I don't have nothing against them. I've got one Fluger, I think, and it is an older reel and I think it has some problems. I may try to fix it. Uh, it's functional, I can fish with it, but it's not that I think they're better, it's just what I was using, just kind of the one I've used. So I have had some good Kershaw knives. I had a Kershaw knife that I could not get rid of. I bought it off the Mac tool truck, I think, and it was serrated part of the way down, and, and I learned to hate a serrated blade knife. I just, I mean, I, a lot of people like them. If you like them, I'm not knocking them for you. But for me personally, I don't want a serrated blade knife. If somebody gives me a serrated blade knife, I'm like, oh, thank you. That is a nice knife. And it goes on the shelf, and that is where it stays. I'm like, that is a nice knife right there on that shelf. <laughs> but if I'm going to tote it and use it, I don't want the serration. I, you just you can't sharpen it. You can't... Uh, it's, I mean, it's good for sawing through rope or something, I guess. I don't know. But it, it I had one, and as far as it being a good knife, it really wasn't the brand. I've got a couple of Kershaw's. One, it's an automatic knife that I toted for years till I broke the tip off. And when I broke the tip off, I ground the back down to the point on the blade to put me another tip. It's just got a drop point now. And it's still a very good knife, and I just kind of retired it because I had toted it for so long. It was one of them black pocket clip knives, and I just kind of got away from the pocket clip knives. But it, I used it for a long time, and I can't remember if it was a Mack truck or the Snap-on truck. I got it off of one of them. Uh, I know I got one knife, a Baron Trapper. No, it was a Stockman. I got a Bear Stockman off the Mack truck, I know. And they, I lost it. I left it on the rear end of a concrete truck. I was working on the side of the road. I was cutting air lines. The brakes had, air brake chamber or something malfunctioned. Anyway, I had to cut and redo some air lines on there. And I had cut one of them plastic air lines and I laid it up on that rear end of that truck. And I was following it in my service truck. When I thought about it, I was like, I left my knife on that rear end. I never seen it. I went back, looked where it drove off. I walked up and down the road a little ways. I don't know where it come off at. But the Kershaw that I had got off of one of the trucks, it was the metal framed thin knife. It was a good knife, but it had that serrated and I fought with it, fought with it. And one day I had done broke the tip on it and ground it down cause I was using it to pry and I didn't really like it. So I didn't care what I did with it. And I, now I can't stand to see somebody prying with, with a knife, but I, then I didn't like that knife. So I was, you know, when I broke the tip off of it, I ground it down and used it for a gasket scraper and everything else. And one day I done got aggravated with it. Something was going on and I throwed it in a garbage can at, at Yates up there in a the shop. And two days later, one of the Mexican guys that worked there cleaning up and doing stuff in the shop come walking up and said, this your knife? I was like, yeah. He said, I found it in the garbage. I was like, well, thank you. I couldn't get rid of it. And finally it disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. But.
I, it was a good knife. I have Kershaw makes some good knives. In fact, I have got a Kershaw fillet knife that has got the extending. You mash the back of it, and the blade extends out. It's in my chuck box, and I really like it, but I don't use it a whole lot. John, I use whichever one in my pocket for <laughs> whatever. I like the Trapper because I, uh, and I've got a Camillus. I've got two or three cases. I've got a hen and rooster. Uh, I've got this one. I've got, I don't know, something. There's another one. But anyway, usually with the Trapper, I don't really ever skin much with these. I usually have a skinning knife out there that I skin most things with. Now, I will skin with it if I'm in a bind or if I'm doing a video. Like, I did a video where I skinned a whole deer with a knife like this, deboned it every, I mean, like, broke the front shoulders down, everything with it. Took the legs off, nothing but this knife. And it wasn't this one. I think it was a case knife I got out there. But for the most part, I use this blade for cutting whatever I'm eating. Cutting meat, cutting whatever. And then if I'm out cutting wires, like if I'm stripping wire, whittling sticks, anything that's like I'm sticking it in whatever, then I use this blade. That's like the working blade. But this blade is the one that I kind of reserve and try to keep sharp. So... But now I have got to using the fish knife more. So it's, I'm kind of losing that general rule. This one now, and I haven't used this knife a whole lot. I have used the fish hook remover right now more than I have used the blade. That fish hook remover is money, y'all. Especially fishing with jigs and you catch a brim and he got a little bitty mouth. You can't get your finger in there with a crappie. I can just about take my finger and poke it in there and pop it loose, you know. So it ain't that I always need this, but if I catch brim like in the fall is when this happens the most. I'll be down there in the canoe casting out to them crappie in some of them deep holes. Well, there's one of them, there's, I can throw like right over here in this spot and catch crappie. And when they kind of slow down biting, I can start back throwing over here and just wear the brim out. Well, them brim will destroy your baits. And it don't matter if you're using Bobby Garland, Strike King, Mr. Twister, whoever. It, the baits themselves, that brim will just destroy it because he's got a little bitty mouth and you can't get your finger in there to, to get it loose. With this, I can slide that right over in there and pop it loose and right out. It saves a lot of my bait. So, Jeff, I haven't got a bubble blade. I, I have thought about And I'm going to tell you all something. I have always used my old Walmart bread uh, fillet knife. My phone's come up and told me the battery was dying. Uh, I may have to get it plugged up to something here in a minute. Uh I'm finna have to plug my, my phone up. But it all, uh, my daddy's got a Rapala over there. Well, my I'm about to wear out my old Walmart $11 knife. Got the straight blade, and I like the straight blade. All the other ones have that curved blade. So I got to use it the other day when I filleted all them crappie I caught in the pond. I filleted them with that. Rapala knife, try, and I finally got the hang of the curved blade, but I have never used the Bubba knife. And, and, and I watched a guy fillet them with both the electric Bubba knife and the regular traditional, and I watched a guy skin them in a way, fillet them in a way I had never done. And I'm so I'm going to experience. Well, he, he filleted it with a knife that he didn't have no ribs in it when he got through filleting it, so... I've got to try to learn that next time I fillet crappie. Larry, you gone? We'll see you. Yeah, John, the flathead screwdriver with a notch cut in it would be the ideal thing. The deal with this knife is, is it's going to be in my pocket. Oh, so that's, that's the story with that. Look, y'all, I'll be right back. I'm fixing to go get a battery pack to hang on this thing and keep my phone's fixing to die if I don't. Give me just a second. I promise I'll be right back. Y'all want to watch Richard Gene? He's up there with crawfish in his hands. All right, I have got...
got a bear. Uh, I think he's doing a live up there too. That's an old one. It ain't right now. <laughs> I done seen it twice. <laughs> this is a battery pack or battery brick. And y'all, this thing is wonderful. Oh. And what I do, I just leave it in this little bag and I'll hang this loop on my tripod right over here. So I may bump and knock y'all around for a second. But that hanging there, and then I can plug that right into my phone. And voila, we back on the money. <laughs> hey, when you've been filming long as I have, you learn all these little tricks. Um, but anyway, Jeff, I the the Bubba knife is is the is the have you used the Bubba fillet knife, the electric like hundred and ten dollar fillet knife? What I'm wanting to know is it really worth a hundred and ten dollars or is the old forty or fifty dollar Rapala just as good? That is my question. Cause the one we got is cordless. You charge it up and it so if you know and I, we, I don't know when we've charged it the last time. And I filleted probably 25. Of, no, I, play, I filleted more than that if it was over with. I filleted 30 or 40 fish with it that me and Daddy both caught and Brody caught. We had two days worth of fish, and I filleted all of them with it. So I don't know how. No words, it lasts good. I'm just struggling with the fact that Bubba Knife is a, electric fillet knife and it's a hundred and i think the one i saw was a hundred and ten or a hundred and twenty dollars Knife doctor. I'll have to check him out. I have never heard of the knife doctor. Oh, Lord. Logan, it ain't, I promise you buying chickens here, it ain't worth, if you in Alabama, the time you drove over here to get it, it ain't worth, you, you'd be just as well off to buy some wherever you at. You'd be, you'd be just as well off or probably better off. Well, I have heard of bubble blades. I may wind up getting one one day. i tell you what I got on my mind. I'm going to go ahead and indulge all in this because you're going to find out eventually. I have got some of the band saw blades from my buddy up here that has a sawmill. And he gave me a broken saw blade. He's like, you, you make knives out of this? I was like, well, I might could make a fillet knife out of this. I've never made a fillet knife. I have took some old kitchen knives and thought I would, you know, kind of modify them or use them for fillet knives. And I got to put up stuff I found in thrift stores, you know. And, uh... I have came up with a wild idea that I want to make a fillet knife like I do my Jonah knife, but make a fillet knife that on the back side of it, I got one down there that I cut notches in. Well, I've, I've got one that on the back side of the fillet knife, we're going to put this on it. And that is nothing sharp. It is not a saw. It is a fish scaler. How smart is it? How smart is it to have a fish scaler on the back side of your knife and fillet with the other? Can anybody tell me there's a re Has somebody already done this? I have never seen one. So before anybody says, oh, you copying so-and-so, I, I may very well, it's, it should have been done. I have not seen it. Have y'all seen it? <laughs> Has anybody ever heard of a fillet knife with a fish scaler on the back side of it? Because I'm all about stuff having more than one purpose. I guess I learned that from old brother Dave Canterbury. 
<laughs> you know, multifunction. I, I, I agree with the principles of stuff having more than one use. And if I'm going to make a knife, I think I want to make me a fillet knife that has a scaler on the back. And when we get it made, we're going to put bubble blades out of business. <laughs> no. I, but you know what? I may could sell them the patent if I got it patented. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I just... Somebody tell me where there's a bad idea in that. What is the flaw that I'm overlooking like? Why would you not already have done this? You can replace the windshield and recalibrate your gas safety system. Stay safe and stay I just think that's what I want. I want a fillet knife. A fish scaler on the back. Just like this fish scaler. So anyway, maybe we'll see that video made here in the future. Um... Logan, I, I I haven't made any knives in a while. Uh, I've got a bunch of people wanting knives, and my problem is is I could stop filming and go make knives and, and make more money by a long shot making knives than filming. Not more money than making pottery. Uh, I just ain't had time to make knives. I'd rather be filming videos. I enjoy filming. But now, I, it gets overwhelming. I think, I took orders on knives last year about this time of the year. I was like, well, you know, I got a bunch of people want knives. I'm gonna take some. I thought I was gonna make 10 knives. Y'all, I had like 40 something knives. And it got overwhelming. It was like, oh, I can't, if I'm going to get out here, I can't get out here and do anything I want to do. I feel like every extra minute I got, I need to be trying to grind on knife blades. So, I, you know, I'm going, I'm going to get back to making some knives because I got a bunch of people wanting a Jonah knife. But now I'm wanting to make me a fillet knife, and I know when I make one, I'm gonna have a bunch of people want one, especially if it works out good. Now, this blade I've got, I, I've got to test. I don't. They're they're bandsaw blades, so how well they're gonna work, I don't know. How I'm gonna make this fish scaler on the back and keep it dull. Cindy, what are you talking about getting naked? <laughs> Oh, I got you. you. Said make it not naked. I couldn't pass that one up. A crescent wrench with teeth. No. No, I don't think I have seen a crescent wrench with teeth. I've seen a pipe wrench. Yeah, Jeff, I, I, that, that's the truth. Anything that you enjoy doing can become something that's like, ooh, and, and I think a lot of people are so money hungry and greedy, think, you know, if there's a dollar to be made, I gotta make it, that they don't enjoy any life because they spend it all trying to acquire more money. And my time and my enjoyment is way more important to me than money. I, I mean, I have turned down some really good paying jobs because I'd rather be at home and be around the house and, and and work at home and be able to throw my stuff down and go fishing when I get ready to, you know? So <laughs> I'm okay with being broke. Forgive me. I know a lot of people look at it and go, oh, you're just lazy. Well, maybe so. I don't, you know. But anyway, I don't mind it. I is... I worked like a dog for 20 years, I guess, read about it. And I got everything I own paid for except for my wife's truck. It don't bother me to throw my stuff down and go fishing. And I can sit there and enjoy while I'm fishing. It was like the other day I went to Bluff Lake. I sat on the lake. It's foggy. It's not really great conditions, not bad windy, but a little breezy. Fish wouldn't bite. And I looked down, it was three o'clock. I'm like, man, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to throw it one more time. <laughs> it's all right. You know, fish, most people done packed up and left. Fish ain't biting today. It was 
fresh water in the lake. And <laughs> Dad, I, I, somebody said that the clocks is going to change again. You know, talking about the clocks changing, I really can't say which way I like it better. They both kind of have their pros and their cons. I like plenty of time, you know, longer daylight in the evenings. But now it's not so important because I'm really not working a scheduled job like where I'm punching a clock. And I come in when it gets dark regardless of what time it is. I get it. The only thing that matters is when church is. I mean, that's literally the only thing that matters. Heather, good night. The thing is, is I can't come in until it gets dark. So if it gets dark earlier, that means I get in the house and get to rest earlier. So, I, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I'm serious, y'all. As long as it's daylight outside, I'm, I got stuff I need to be doing. I'm going to be out there doing something. It may be something I want to do. I mean, it might be fishing, but. I can't come in the house till it's about dark. I mean, I, I don't know why that is. So I wind up way more tired in the summer. But I do like daylight, and I like warmer weather. I don't like hot weather. So I don't know. John, I think I'm retired too. I don't. <laughs> I'm retarded. And you know how I know I'm retarded? Because I'm tarred again. I was tarred yesterday, and I'm tarred again today, so ain't that retarded? You know, anyway. Y'all figured out. It, it makes sense if you don't think about it. I don't mind cold weather. I don't mind winter. In fact, I kind of look forward to winter. I guess it's partly because of hunting season. Uh, I enjoy hunting. I didn't do a lot of hunting this year. I, nothing went right for me this year with hunting season. I'll just be honest with you. Buggy stayed tore up. The muzzle loader wouldn't shoot. And modern guns just don't excite me. I mean, it's, I'm just trying to collect meat at that point. Oh, uh, I'd rather fish. And if I if a fish should act right all winter, I'd. And y'all already seen me getting that canoe down there. And if crappie go to bite, and you can hang up me making it to a to a hunting spot in time to hunt. I done done that way to me. I know me. <laughs> if a fish will bite, I'll fish. <laughs> Oh, scat. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, sir, Glenn, you are exactly right. And I am a wealthy man. I am rich beyond measure. Because I got peace in my heart. I, honest to God, I can go out there and sit down and I'm all right with it. I used to be worried about stuff and stressed and I mean, I have peace and it's, where does it come? It comes from the Lord, but it also comes into, well, you know, I, this world is coming apart and it's going to come apart. Politics ain't going to help me not one bit. So I don't worry about who's going to be the next president. I don't care if it's Joe Biden or if it's Donald Trump or if it's that woman or whoever. I, honest to God, do not care. Because I don't think there's a whole lot going to change regardless of what's there. They may be a little bit change. I mean, there are some policies that I, you know, I think, man, we don't, you know, I don't agree with this or I don't, but me worrying about it? No, I, I'm not. You know, I mean, I'll go vote and hope maybe it goes one way or the other, but that peace is where wealth is. That, that you know, whatever happens, let it happen. The Lord's going to take care of me. And I really believe that, so. No, Dwayne Gerard, I did not get the muzzleloader shooting good because the barrel is rusted out. 
we have got to put a new barrel on that. I'm going to order one from uh, Deer Creek. Somebody said they had one, and then I never heard nothing else about it. Oh. My muzzleloader was a 50 caliber. Oh, uh, it is a... Uh, I can't, I think it was a Thompson. I, I, I had to get it down. I've got three of them. One of them is a Renegade, and I think it may have a chance of shooting decent. But I'm going to put a new barrel on the the the, uh, the Hawking Hunter I've got. And I'm going to, uh, I can order a barrel from Deer Creek for like $115. So sometime this summer, when fishing season's kind of like it's too hot to fish, I may get that where I can get in the shed and work on it or, you know, somewhere in the shade and tinker on that. Put a new barrel on it and we'll get it sighted in and, and we'll try to gear more into... I'm going to try to nail down me a place to hunt next year. Uh, aside from having just this swamp to ramble around in, I need a place that is like my place to hunt where I can set up and do my thing and actually see deer and not be just rambling around aimlessly. With that swamp, there's so many people in it and public land that you don't really have a spot you've scouted out that's sort of your spot. You go down there and everywhere you know that there's a deer, well, there's somebody's buggy parked there and that's kind of the way that works. Yes, sir, John Thomas, that is the truth. Oh, God is in control. Cindy Aber said, Jeff Foxworth said the difference in naked and naked is naked means you ain't got no clothes on. Well, Jerry Clower, he said he said he'd had some back problems and they told him, he said his, his boy, you know, was in sports medicine and down there. He said, we're going to take you to see this doctor and, and get you looked at. And he said he went down there and said they told him, said, we're going to give you an MRI. And he said, a what? And they said, an MRI. He said, ain't that a female operation on a woman? And they said, no, it is a scan for us to look and see what is going on in your back. And he said, he said, so I didn't, he said, this is the first time I'd ever heard of an MRI. He said, and I was on my way to have one. He said, and I was in that room, said, and this woman coming there and said, you're going to have to take all your clothes off and get naked and put this gown on. She said, I'm going to leave, leave you with a gown, you put this on. And he said, you mean buck naked? And she said, well, is there any difference in naked and buck naked? He said, yes, ma'am. You can be naked with your socks on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a difference in naked and buck naked. Lord, Lord, peace of peace of mind. Well, Logan, I appreciate it. I'm glad you can listen to me, buddy. I'm going to tell you the Lord is your most important thing, and it ain't as much about sitting and listening to somebody talk about it. It's about finding that relationship between you and him when you can go out there and sit down on the creek bank and you can sit there and look around and go, God made all this and he made it for me. And he made them fish so I could eat, and he made these animals so I could eat, and these plants so I could heal myself and eat them too. And, you know, he's made everything that I really need right here. I ain't got to do no whole lot to get it, just a little effort. And then I sit there and think about, you know what, Lord, thank you for taking care of me. And if I thank him today for taking care of me today, he'll probably take care of me tomorrow. And that relationship is where that peace comes in. It's every day I say, Lord, thank you for today. I'm here one more time. Let's make the best of it. Some days is better than others, but every day is usually a good day. I 
I have sat and looked at the water and tears run down my face. I've sat, looked out on the side of a mountain. Tears just run down because you know what? He's been good to me. I don't deserve any of this that's going on. I don't deserve all of y'all watching me and listening to me. I don't deserve the opportunity to tell you about him. I don't deserve the peace. I don't deserve the home I've got. I don't deserve the family I've got. I've been a shady, bad individual at times. Somebody that you wouldn't walk across the road to help. And he's been good to me. That's what's important. When you can remember that. Real peace comes in when you want what you already got. When I could walk out there and say, you know what? I already got the fishing pole I want. I'm going to go fishing with it. I, I, I want this buggy that I got because that's an easy way for me to get to my fishing hole. And I got a cooler to put my fish in. And you know what? I, I got what I need. There's always something else out there that I wouldn't mind having. You know, it'd probably make life a little easier, but you know what? I'm pretty content with what I got. If I never could buy anything else, I could still be happy. I could still enjoy life to the fullest. And that's, that's when, where the secret is, learning how to want what you already got. Well, 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 y'all, where are we going from here? What is the subject of the evening? We have told about as much Jerry Clower as anybody could probably stand in one sitting. <laughs> Hunting and fishing. I got a question for some of y'all, especially you older. I wish I'd have got it a little earlier when some of them was still on here that done went to bed. But vintage fishing poles, what are we looking for in, say, to match up with my Abu Garcia ambassador reels? I want a good vintage. I want to know what I'm looking for. I'm not familiar with vintage rods. But I want something to put that reel on other than, I don't, I think that's a, I don't know if it's an ugly stick or a quantum or something. Jenny Bear said gardening. It is about that time. Uh, I love gardening. I'm planning on not doing as much of it as normal, but now that ain't near about saying we're not going to do any. We're going to do it. Uh, I've got tomatoes, tomatoes started. Uh, I had to restart them a second time. I think I told y'all I burned mine up trying to harden them off and forgot about them and left them out. So you're supposed to set them out there two, uh, like an hour to two hours. I left them all evening. I mean, it cooked them. So, coffee pots in. Mine's empty too. I got two empty coffee cups sitting right here under my feet. And Michelle went and got in the bathtub. Lose speed stick. They, is that an old vintage reel? I mean, rod? Eagle claw rod. You're going to have to look. Uh, gardening, I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put in to make... I've got some new beds I have got to make. I started peeling my log. I'm going to build my raised bed back there at the upper end of my garden, and I just ain't had time to... to uh, work on it so much, and then it's been sloppy and wet but i need to get that done i'm gonna put in some compost i'm gonna try to get some soil up here from where my neighbor's feeding his cows hey i like to dig that up and put that in there i mean is it the best fertilizer it probably ain't the best but it's better than just regular dirt so that's what i'm gonna use because i ain't going to buy bag dirt to put in no raised bed i never have um I have made a bunch of compost, but I, I have not made enough to put, to fill up a, a raised bed. I have made enough to kind of add to them and such as that. So I've got that, I've got to get done at some point. I have drug both of my tillers and the pressure washer up under my shed out there. All of that stuff has got to have some maintenance done on it before I can do. Tractor's got to have some work before gardening. So I've got a pile of work I got to do before I ever start gardening. And y'all, it would be, it, 
it's time for me to plant potatoes. Uh, you want to plant them in the dark nights, which is the new moon. And you, my grandpa said plant them in the dark nights of February, but now we've got to where we're planting them in the dark nights of March. So we'll be doing that here pretty quick, but I got to get stuff squared away, figure out where I'm going to put them. And so anyway, I'm, I don't want to get too deep into gardening this year because I want to get off and do more fishing than I have ever done. Me and Brody and Michelle are going to camp out and fish more this year. And y'all, I have not pulled off a camping trip. I want to go stay in the swamp, take my tarp, my hammock, my new underquilt, the boat, the new cooler we bought, and sit up down there and run lines all night and camp out right by myself. I can't make that happen. Mark Garcia made the colon rods, ugly stick, Fenwick. Jenny Robertson, funny lady, Jenny Robertson, old lightning rod. Ugly stick. So the loos, they used to make them in the 60s and 70s. A good Berkeley rod. Jenny, I I have to pull up my calendar. I have got an app on my phone that has the new moon and the moon phases, and I look at it and see when it is. But they'll be like it's usually like two weeks from full moon to new moon, or right up there about, you know, generally speaking. So I'm not sure. Somebody says Shakespeare Wonder Rock. But I, I'll have to look. Root crops you plant on dark nights in the new moon when there is no moon. Or really you want to plant it like three days before that. Above the ground crops you want to plant like two or three days before a full moon. And what this does is promote germination. Uh, gives you a lot better germination rate. Uh, to sit here and say that it don't that you can't grow something if you plant it the other time is not true either. You can plant, you can grow stuff no matter when you plant it. It just, it seems to do better. And you know, the Bible even mentioned at some point, and I'd have to pull it up before I get into saying the Bible says, but it talks about the, the time, the seasons and the time, there's a time to plant and there's, the, something about the moon, I don't know. I'd have to pull it up and look. But I know it is mentioned in there some way or another. And that's why I kind of plant by the moon. I, I, my grandpa planted by the moon, and I just, I like to do that. Cindy, y'all go and camp. Y'all went last year, didn't you, and camped somewhere trout fished. Well, let me ask y'all something talking about the rods. I've seen some aluminum rods. Are those, I'm wanting to grill fish and bass fish with it. So we're going to be putting some pressure on it. Is an aluminum rod a bad thing? What am I, am I looking for fiberglass car? I know the older rods were made out of different stuff. I have seriously thought about trying to make a rod uh, because I have some old broke, fishing poles i don't know much about making that kind of thing <coughs> i have made fishing poles but we made the old cane poles and i may take me a cane pole and mount it on me when i make me a rod i don't know this that might would be fun to do i might think about it. i ain't thought about that if i took me some bamboo the, the old ones, they took bamboo and they, they took the bigger pieces of bamboo and stripped it and then they turned them, I think, backwards all together and they were kind of octagon shaped and then they wrapped them, you know, where they put the eyes in between and I don't remember exactly how that's done. I watched some of it. That might be something, but it seems bad time consuming for, I don't know, I, I'll have to see. 
I bet I could do it, though. Oh, Phillips, they, they's nothing like eating fish on creek bank. Hands down, by far, the best way to cook fish. Yes, sir. Solid fiberglass rod with a handle. Well, so I'll tell you something I did like. I seen some of those old rods on there that the where the reel is is like recess. Like the handle is here, and then there's a dip down for the reel to mount, and then the rod comes back up. And I'm kind of favoring the look of them, but nah, that might be awkward when you, I don't know. Electroculture. I have never tried that. I've seen a guy that does it. I, I'll say this, with electroculture, I do know that when there's a lightning storm comes through, the next day your plants will be taller. I, that is a fact. Uh, but I will tell you this, all of my tomatoes and everything out there has got metal fence posts drove in the ground right beside them, so I'm probably already doing as much electroculture as I need to do. Uh, I ain't doing it for electroculture, but these metal fence posts drove all in my garden, holding up trellises and panels for the cucumbers and tomato steaks, and so. Well, JL327, as far as Grunnel fishing goes, now bass, a little more sensitive. Crappie is where I want real sensitive, light action, soft teal. But now grunnel, I, I can take a stick and catch grunnel. Cause I mean, when he grabs this through and then I dip it, I'm watching that line run. So. I wish we had trout. I would love to learn to fly fish. And I have got an old fly reel. I don't have a fly rod. Well, I, I have an old one that I won't fish with. It was my grandfather's just put up at my mom them's. She got it actually uh, when he passed away. And uh, I wouldn't fish it, but I... We ain't talked a lot about fishing, Jeff. We talking about, I got my Abu Garcia reel that was mine. I started bass fishing with when I was a kid, really. And uh, I put a new pole and gear in it, and I'm wanting a vintage rod to put on it. I'm kind of in what do I want. I don't really know what I need to look for as I'm like looking on eBay for a good vintage rod for me to grill fish. So I want something still that whenever that grill hits, I dip that rod down and I watch it run. And, you know, I, I just need it to be good. But I would like to, my grandpa here, he had fly rods and he used them to brim fish. When they would find them brim bed and they would flip that fly out there on top of the brim bed. And boom, man, they, they, that's how they caught brim which I think then they didn't have these telescoping hand poles. It was either cut you a bamboo or a river cane and made you a fishing pole. And y'all, when I cut that bamboo and started making me some big tall poles, I got scolded. Oh, that ain't what they use. They use cane. They use it. You can say whatever you want to, but I grew up on the edge of this swamp right here, and the old timers around here went over there to that bamboo patch, and they cut them bamboo because they was catching them grunnel down there, and these little old flimsy river canes ain't going to hold that grunnel long. <laughs> know what I mean, Vern? <laughs> so, <laughs> that, where are you from? That river cane might have been the thing they used, but here they went and cut them bamboos because they was a lot longer, and they could reach out there where that grunnel was, and, and he'd double over and I've seen them put a uh, uh, nylon string on there for a line because I'm going to tell you, a grunnel will tear up your fishing equipment if you ain't careful. That's why I take a whole pack of hooks with me when I go. <laughs> I have done a lot of support for gamakatsu. 
<laughs> I bought a lot of the hooks because of Grendel will mangle them. But uh, we've got river cane and bamboo, and so I, you know, but now that was the only thing used. They used them fly rods to, you know, probably with a cork too. So I don't know what all my grandpa did. I, by the time I got big enough to start fishing, he'd go, did you catch any fish? Yeah. He said, if you catch any jack, bring them up here. So if we caught any chain pickerel, he wanted them. That was his favorite fish. And then he he liked trout, but now to him a trout was a bass. And he just called them trout. Well, Jeff, I have something I ain't never done. We'll have to make that happen this summer at some point. You're down around Mobile now, ain't you? If so, we need to set a trip up at some point this summer. I'm going to be down, I don't know when, but I'll plan a trip down to my sister's at Long Beach, stay with her, and me and her husband want to go fishing. He's the one that was with me grunnel fishing the other day, and uh, he hadn't done a lot of fishing in the last few years and really wants to go fishing, so whenever they can get some time off and be home, we want to plan a fishing trip down there somewhere along the coast because I don't know a lot about it down there, but me and him want to go. I would like to go out on some fishing adventures. I don't know nothing about saltwater fishing. So I'm one of them people right now that somebody's got to hold my hand and bait my hook for me and get the fish off when I catch him. <laughs> but when I, now really, when I catch a fish in the saltwater, I'm like, hey, I got a fish. Say, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> fish. <laughs> Now, up here, I'm in my element. I know what I'm doing up here, but down there, I'm like, hey. <laughs> Jeff, I'll have to, well, I need to get your number some way or another or give you my number. Get on my Spirit of the Outdoors Facebook, and I think you're on there. I'll shoot you a message if I find you on there, and... And we'll, where I can get up with you whenever I get ready to go. I think I can connect with you on there, so don't worry about it. I, I'll find you on there. I know you're on there. Um, Dwayne, what kind of a pole am I wanting? I like where the rod has the longer, like the cork handles, I like for that rod to come out behind me. And it's more about the balance than it is the grip because... Most of the time, I'm holding the reel itself. I mean, my thumb is up in the line, and I've got a grip around that reel because I like to take these two fingers and hold the front of the line in front because I like to feel that line on this finger while I'm reeling it if I feel a strike or whatever. It's just my habit, so it ain't like I need all that for a handle to hold on to, but I like it back there. For Somebody explain that to me. I can't. So I want a longer handle, and I like cork handles. Uh, all of my rods ain't cork handles. or cork better? Probably not. I don't know. I just, it's what I like. I like the look of it. Let's put it that way. So anyway, I'm not really that big. You fish, fish from Gaucher to Orange Beach, so lots of area, yeah. See, I have got free. I stayed down there on the Pascagoula River one weekend at a friend of ours' cabin there, and I we didn't really fish much. Me and Brody got on the kayak and fished a little bit, but I don't know much about that area. Uh, and then when we went out with uh, Davis, we got out there in the kayaks, and we did pretty good that day, but as far as me knowing what I was doing, I didn't have a clue. Caught plenty with a willow branch for a pole. Real prepper, I, I could see that. Uh, a Shakespeare rod, as long as David, as long as whatever I get, I want something to kind of match I'm looking for something that the Abu Ambassador would have been on when it was new. Maybe, is it, was there a combo that came maybe one time back in the day? Or what was the common thing that everybody would have put the 
Abu Garcia ambassador on back in that day. That is kind of what I'm looking for. But then again, I'm wanting something I can use. You see in my house all these antiques and stuff. We use everything. I mean, it's not just like I want an antique to hang up for decoration. I, when I buy an antique, like I'm planning on using it. You know, does it work? <laughs> That's my first thing. So I'm wanting to grunnel fish with it. Whatever I get, I won't be like, I'm fishing this video. We fishing with vintage gear. You know, it's it's nostalgia and, and look and videos, but. I like the old, I just naturally like older stuff anyway. I'm geared that way. So I think this is a perfect fit for me. I like them, Linwood Vowel, I made him a knife and he sent me them two, other two Abus last year. And man, both of them worked good. We caught several gruntle on them last year. And then this one that I refurbished, it was my reel for years and years. And my I think my daddy bought it new. And I think he has a black one to match it somewhere. I think he still uses it or has it on a reel. I'm not sure. But they were probably reels that it went on around somewhere. But, Lord, as a kid, I tore up stuff. I ain't no telling what all I destroyed. A very Berkeley Bionics. Ambassador fat on a loose speed stick. See, I'm gonna have to look all this up. See, y'all telling me about information I don't have any clue about for whatever reason. As much as I love fishing, this older stuff, I don't, yeah, I guess it was before my time of. Well, we bought everything at Walmart. That's <laughs> so, that the only place we even knew sold fish stuff. When I discovered Bass Pro Shop, I was like, what? <laughs> and you know, I'm kind of perturbed that I ain't got a Bass Pro Shop catalog this year. I may have to call and tell them about that. I ain't wanting to order nothing out of the catalog. I'll order it online, but I like to look at that catalog, that big, thick one. Jeff, where do, where do I find this stuff at? Where do, I, where do I look to get a fiberglass blank and put on classic, is that Fuji, Fuji guides? So that's what I want to do. I'm looking at Berkeley Bionics. I'm looking at a loose speed stick and I'm looking And a fiberglass blank with Fuji guides. T G and Y. Lose speed stick in 78 with a dial a millionaire. I seen them dial a millionaire reels on eBay today, this morning. Diana Bass Pro Shop may charge you for a catalog. That's a small price to pay for that much enjoyment. You know, I mean, because there's, there's one chair in the house that always has to have a good magazine by it all the time. And y'all know which chair that is. <laughs> That's where it'll stay. <laughs> Get in touch with Bill Dance. He'll give you a history lesson on classic rods and reels. I'm, Ken, I bet you right. And I like old Bill Dance, even though he is a Tennessee fan. <laughs> I, I do. I like Bill Dance's song. The sun's just starting to climb up over the treetops. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's plain to see. You're going fishing with Bill Dance today. <laughs> Y'all think I might have watched that a time or two, maybe? I bet mine ain't, Cindy. I, I, they very rarely send me one for some reason. I have to buy to ask for one every year.
So I'm looking for a speed stick. Michelle, you got a notepad over there? I need to write these because I'm going to forget this. Berkeley Bionics, loose speed stick, and a fiberglass blank with Fuji guides. So we got to do some, I got to figure out where to find all this stuff at. Backyard Beasley said Richard Jean will tell you. If I could get old Richard Jean to talk to me, it'd make my day. I, my channel just ain't big enough to attract his attention yet, I don't think. <laughs> Richard Jean probably don't know about Spirit of the Outdoors yet, but we well on our way. When we get to 100,000 subscribers, we're going to petition old, old Richard Jean to come go grunnel fishing. We, we don't see, Dwayne, I don't save any of my footage. When I get through making a video, it'll clog your computer up many videos I make. Everything gets deleted. So I, I don't know how to, but now like me sliding down that bank the other day down there. But I have been fortunate. I have not made a lot of bloopers. Now, last year when we was running that trot line back there, me and Roscoe liked to dump the canoe. And I tell y'all, I liked to dump it yesterday. Me and Roscoe about turned the canoe over down there baiting up them limb hooks. And I had a big old five gallon bucket. Michelle, we'd bought some gamma lids. Y'all know what a gamma lid is? A screw on the top, screw down in there. Well, I had put a Lowe's bucket, had one of them lids on it. She had had it in here for flour. Well, somehow the weevils got in part of that flour and we had to dump it all out. And the bucket sat out there to get washed out, make sure the weevils was killed or whatever. And it got nasty sitting outside molded. So I cleaned it up, started putting minners in it this year. And I had it in the middle of the canoe. Well, I leaned over to grab a hook or something and that bucket slid to one side. But when it did, that canoe rocked on up. And y'all, me and old Roscoe liked to went for a swim. But I did not have the camera on at the moment, so it went on there. But now last year when I liked to dump it, it was all on camera. So we, we could probably make some bloopers before it's said and done. With a, I got the plank. Abu Garcia, colon glass is the factory rod for that reel. Dwayne, we'll start, from now on, I'll start saving some of that footage. We'll put together a blooper reel one day. I'm going to try not to have a whole lot of bloopers, though, huh? I'd rather tell y'all funny tales and stuff and make you laugh. And <laughs> but now, hey, I can tell y'all some stuff. Back back in our wilder days, me and a buddy of mine, we run hooks down here and we was running them in John boat. Well, he'd always drive the boat, Anthony. And I'd get up front because I enjoyed getting the fish off and baiting the hooks and all that stuff. I'd let him just drive. Well, we was going down the river. I mean, we was... I guess it was early in the spring. I don't remember. I had done started trapping. But anyway, there was a mink running down the bank up there. Well, I jumped up, grabbed my twenty two pistol. I'm like, I want that mink. You know, I'm going to tan its side or at least save it. So that was when I was collecting fur. So I'm up on my knees, like, shooting at this mink. Boom, boom. I had an automatic Smith & Wesson, that little camouflage pistol. Y'all have seen it in videos. And uh, about that time, that motor hung a log. <laughs> <laughs> I was still shooting when I went head first in the water. He said all he saw was two rubber boots sticking up, go down in the water. <laughs> that was way before we filmed anything, so we didn't get none of that on camera. <laughs> I see Unchained, I ain't got any of that footage where I missed a deer. I I, I tell you another one that y'all never even knew was a blooper. 
I was paddling, this was two years ago, down there in the canoe. Or it may have been last year. I think it was two years ago. I'm paddling along. I got the camera set up, and I'm filming like I always do some in front of me. Just you see the tip of the canoe and then the bank and the river and all that creek. I'm paddling along, and there's a log coming up. Well, I reach up and tuck, cut the camera off. So I can get, I got to get over this log and the log ain't sticking up out of the water, but this much. So I just kind of ram up on it. And then I'm fumbling around trying to paddle me over it. And all of a sudden this deer jumps up on the bank and runs off. And I'm like, oh, Lord, it was a deer right there. And I mean, it was a good buck. He wasn't no monster, but I mean, it was a good buck. And I went back and pulled the footage up. And that deer is just as pretty as you please right in dead center of the screen sitting there looking at me. When I paddled up there and I cut the camera off, I mean, I'm, I can see the deer there. He's just watching me paddle up to that log as pretty as you please. <laughs> I don't remember if I even mentioned it. It burnt me up, too. <laughs> So Jeff, where do, where do I look to find this stuff? Purchase all the components to build a rod so you can design it exactly how you want it. I think Miss Sue sent me a, a magazine. I have got it somewhere I put it up that had building rods on it. I don't know what I did with it. Cause I, I, and and Jeff is probably like the the I'm I'm probably gonna have to do that because it's like me building that muzzle loader down there. That muzzle loader is special to me because I built it. I had I have built knives. I built everything there is. I'd never built a gun. I built a gun now. I have made a fishing pole, as in cut a cane, dried it, tied a line to the end of it, and we got a cane pole, you know. But to sit here and really make a fishing rod, that's, that's probably what I need to do. That's probably where we need to go. <laughs> that would just kind of fit the whole nostalgia of everything we do here. Place was called Jeans Netcraft that had rod building stuff. My uncle John, who started watching your channel, was very impressed with you and Brody slamming those crappies. He said that boy's gonna be quite an outdoorsman one day soon. Well, tell him thank you, Dwayne. Oh, it, it's and I mentioned this in the video you're gonna see come out. I finished today, like Brody. I was gonna take him with me yesterday when I baited up the hooks. And I did not bait him, take him because I asked her, son, you want to go with me riding the canoe where I bait these hooks? He said, no, I'm going to stay and play man. And I left him here because, y'all, I'm not going to make Brody go do stuff. Uh, my daughter mentioned the other day that, she, well, she didn't tell me. She was telling my wife, said, well, you know, I hope one day Brody don't, you know, grow up and resent this because everything you've ever done you got a camera you know on film and everything and you know i ain't really thought about that but i don't want brody to think one day the only reason i did stuff with him was so i could put him in videos so at some point me and brody's gonna have to just go do stuff for me and brody leave the camera off and but now i'll ask him i did the other day when we was doing something i said you want to make a video or you want to feed no let's go make a video and he so he kind of likes it. I mean, especially after he's gotten some stuff in the mail and kind of sees like, oh, you know, this is this is a fun thing. So, yeah, Jeffrey, I think I need to build a rod. I think that's exactly what I'm probably still going to get a vintage rod for now because I don't know. I don't know how long it'll take me to build a rod and acquire the stuff and figure out what to do. What are the odds of me taking stuff from the landscape and some junk laying around and building a rod, like taking some wire and making my own line guides? 
building a rod that way for now and then like okay i've kind of got the the idea or the concept and then really getting some stuff and making a nice one so jenny good to see you tonight thank you for hanging out with us have a good night we'll see you next weekend you'll see me tomorrow probably but i you know Me and Brody will be down there, and he'll say, "We, we, you, I'm your best fishing partner." Cause I tell him all the time, I say, "You my favorite fishing buddy. You, if I get to take anybody fishing, I want to take you. You, the one I want to take the most." And that's the truth. He's he's the fishing buddy that I waited for my whole life. Lisa fished with me some, but. You know, she was a girl, and I didn't want to push her into doing boy things, not taking away anything from her. Me and her, had, she was a good fisherman, too. Lisa's, if she decides I want to go bass fishing, she can do it. And Michelle can catch more fish than I can bass fishing. We went, took her one day, and she caught more fish than I, there was three of us. She caught more than me and the other guy did put together. And Lisa can catch fish, but Lisa's her mind's on other things. She ain't really interested in going fishing with daddy no whole lot. I asked her that. I said, when I went to the lake, I said, you want to go fishing with me in the morning? She said, yeah, I'll go. What time are we leaving? I said, probably about daylight. She said, oh, I don't know. I, so that kind of, you know, that kind of done away with that. I, you know, same way with her, with Brody, I ain't going to make them go. You know, I'm not going to be like, yeah, you going with me. I think that's a fast way to, to turn a kid off to something because I know some people right now that they don't hunt today because their parents were like strict and hard and and, and I'm that way. I, I get serious about it. When I'm fishing, I have to be real careful because Brody's over there, I'm like, leave me alone. I'm trying to catch a fish. But I, when I need to be over there helping him catch it, and so... I struggle with that because I really am passionate about fishing. I mean, I love it. I, it's just, I, I, I like to fish. So I, I have to be careful with that. You know, if, if he wants to fish, I want him to fish. If he wants to throw sticks in the water, I, I got to let him throw sticks in the water. I just trade that. So I don't throw them over here while I'm fishing. Now you throw them over here. <laughs> Jeff, it seems like that. It, it seems the girls can be more successful at fishing than the guys can. I, I, I'm serious about Michelle. We were all in a pond lined up fishing down the bank, and we throwing plastic baits out there for bass, and, and she's tearing them up every throw. Well, I'll tell you what happened. Me and my buddy, I had caught about three fish. My buddy, I think he had caught one. Michelle had caught like six. Well, she pulls her bait up, and we fishing with, like, plastic crawfish or lizards or brush hogs and stuff like that is my favorite baits. She's got this black lizard or something on, and it's, like, hanging sideways. It doesn't tore the, the head part of it. You know how they'll split and they come through, and the hook's just hooked in the middle of the bait. And she's like, is my bait all right? And my buddy, for a joke, he was like, oh, yeah, it's all right. So she rears back and chunks it. And he looks and he said, if she catches a fish like that, he said, I'm going home or <laughs> something. And she doubled up and caught a nice bass off of it like that. And he just threw his pole down. He's like, that's it. <laughs> so <laughs> I won't never forget that. You remember that, Michelle? <laughs> she wore us out that day. I mean, it was hands down, no doubt about it. She put it on us on the fishing that day. So, I, you know, I, I love fishing, and, and grental fishing is the thing for me. I grew up on it. It is the biggest fish we have here. Grental fight the hardest. Uh, now, I get excited about grental, and I genuinely get excited when I catch one for two reasons. Like, for me, grental is the fish I want to eat. All the fish out there in the water, grental is the mahi-mahi I'm after. When I catch a grunnel, I am fixing to eat like a king. It is by far the best eating fish, in my opinion, 
hands down over any of them. Crappie, catfish. I mean, I love crappie, y'all. I am not knocking crappie. I like catfish. Grinnell is better. Grinnell is by far better. So when I catch one, I'm like, I'm fixing to get to eat the finest cuisine that there is. So I'm excited about that. And that Grinnell is one of the hardest fishes to land. He's not necessarily the hardest to get to bite because if you get in them and they bite in that day, they'll eat anything you throw out there sometimes. Now there's other times where they don't hardly hit nothing. You've got to struggle to catch them. But when you get one hung, he will tear your gear all up. I mean, it's a challenge to get him on the bank and in the cooler, <laughs> especially with all your stuff still intact. So, I mean, you know, it's just a lot of fun. And when I get one, I genuinely get excited. I don't have to, like, put on. Now, there's been a few times that I was, like, when I caught one down a real steep bank, I didn't get so excited because I'm like, I'm, I'm all of a sudden, I went into problem-solving mode. Like, I got to get him up this bank. What have I got to do? I got to to get down. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get him versus, like, excited about reading him in. So anyway, I'm, yeah, David, that Grinnell is by far the best. I mean, it's just... No, Jeff, I ain't done any. I, really, the only fishing I've ever, ever done in my life is what is right here in these muddy waters around where I'm sitting. Bass, brim, red bellies. Now, I love red belly fishing. Light action. Y'all, I got to let my buddy in. R Roscoe is over here at the door. Y'all see him? He done got all beside himself over there. But anyway, I, I the red bellies is fun to catch. Like we crickets and a and a beaver dam, and they're good eating, but they little bitty fish, you know. Grunnel bass, chain pickerel, all uh, what else is it that we do a lot of white perch, obviously. Um these gar here, I have never targeted gar, so I want to do that. But speckled trout, we don't, I don't guess we have them here. We don't even have smallmouth bass here that I know of. Uh, I have caught what we call a Gasper Ghoul, which is a buffalo. Now, they put up a fight. They, they can be a trip to catch sometimes because usually you're going to catch them on like brim fishing or crappie fishing gear. They're not going to bite like a big bass bait most of the time, so. David, with a grunt, the... If you mishandle the fish, it's not going to be a good eating experience. That's why a lot of people throw them away. Uh, and what happened for me, for me to figure out how wonderful they were, was we had a John boat with a live whale in it. So when I caught one, he went in the live whale. He was alive when I got home by accident. I mean, he just, they'll live in a mud hole. All my fish always went live whale. I have never took a cooler to put fish on ice up until here recently. And and crappie and catfish need to be put on ice because it firms the meat up a little bit, I, I would say. Uh, now the fish, somebody said, well, I like to put them fish on ice because they're prettier. They're not prettier on ice. They're prettier when they're in water. When you put them in a live whale or a cooler of water, them fish get dark and pretty and that's, that's what's a beautiful, the color comes out in them. You put them on ice, they'll turn white looking, but the meat firms up good. But when you put a grunnel on that, that meat starts turning to mush. Don't kill him like that. You want to keep him alive till you're ready to clean him, and that is the secret. You can actually wet the meat a little bit if you're ready to cook it right then. But now, if you're not ready to cook it and you wet it, you, it'll speed that process up just like killing him, putting him on ice. So, and I, I, you know, there's a lot of other, there's a lot of 
salt water. I would love to catch a shark. I've heard that catching a shark's fun. I, I would like to try that. Oh. Uh, I have never eaten gar. I have heard they were okay. I've heard make gar balls. I've heard snip it down with 10 snips and cut the strips out of the back and cook it. We're going to try it at some point whenever I can figure out exactly how to catch them. Uh, yeah, Jeff, I agree. I, I like to, I like to, I like to clean and cook fish. And I, and I, my wife, she ain't crazy about them. She was like, I we, we just had fish the night because I was like, when you gonna, when we gonna cook these catfish? I got four catfish that, you know, I caught today. I was like, when we gonna cook these? She's like, well, I don't know if I want fish again. I'm like, I can eat fish at least three, four times a week, you know. I can't eat fish that often. I was like, well, you can eat hamburger meat every night. We just cook it two or three different ways. It's still hamburger meat. And I went, well, I like hamburger meat. And I said, well, I like fish. <laughs> I mean, I, I, but I'll put them on that black stone out there with some lemon juice and cut up some onions around them and bake. I put them in a, one of them glass like baking pan or any kind of baking pan with some butter. And it is good. So anyway. Y'all know it is nearly 10.30. We've been going at this since 7. Bluefish out on the pass, Florabama. I bet Jeff knows something about that Florabama fishing. Put them in the cooler. I keep fish when I'm... Depending on what I'm doing now, if I go bass fishing, bass fishing is the one thing I enjoy doing that I really never plan to keep fish. If I'm just wanting to go have the experience of casting and changing baits and playing, I go bass fishing. Now, there is the occasion that I'll walk back here to this duck pond and, and catch crappie when they bite and that I just catch them and throw them back. I'll be testing baits or whatever. I'll do that occasionally, but now... It's, I don't know, catching catching crappie out of the ponds where I can be real successful is really not that challenging and that fun. I mean, I've quit filming doing that kind of stuff much, but if I'm wanting to test a bait out or see what this, you know, how this works, that's where I'll go try them out at. But. Oh, Cindy, most definitely it's not a boy thing anymore. They is, they is some females that are excellent fishermen, by, by all means. And, you know, it amazes me that there's not more women on the Major League Fishing Tour. Uh, I don't really keep up with it, but it comes across my Instagram feed because I watch a lot of fishing stuff and do a lot of fishing stuff. And you just don't see a lot of like frontline women up on the major league fishing. You know, they, sh and I don't know why that is because they're frontline of every other sport there is. And, and fishing women is, is just as good at it as men. So anything. So y'all, I have enjoyed it. It is late. I ain't realized we've been going to 1030. My Lord. I had got to go get a bath, y'all. I have been in that swamp this morning, and I imagine I smell somewhat like a fish as we're talking about fish. Jeff, I'm with you on that. I do not put fish in. The, the only fish that I put in the freezer is when we go to Tom Bigby and we run big catfish lines, and I come home with like a huge cooler full of catfish. Well, then I clean them all, and they go in the freezer because you, you just can't eat that much catfish at one setting. Most of the time, like if I go grunnel fishing and I catch three or four grunnel, I, I, we fry. Like the other night with all them crappie, I fried a dish pan full of crappie last Saturday night. And my brother and them came, my, me and my wife, my mom and dad my wife's mom and dad, we invited everybody over and we had a big fish fry and we all ate fish. And that's the way I do it. And and you know, we wound up, the next day I eat all the fish that was left. If you'll put them in a Ziploc bag and stick a paper towel in there to help soak that grease out and keep them from being so soft and soggy. And I can eat them the next day. Now, when I was young, I didn't like them the next day, but 
Now I can eat fish the next day, warm them up. I'll eat every one of them. I put that uh, that Valentina hot sauce, I put it in the pan like you do ketchup, sop them in it. Oh, it's good. So anyway, I, I don't put, for the most part, I don't put fish in the freezer either. I, when I catch fish, we either cook them all. And, and I'm one of the guys that, that when I'm catching fish, I'm putting in the cooler what I want to eat. And I know when to quit. Like, these people that go brim fishing and they like, we caught 300 and why? What would you do with 300 feet? You know, that don't make sense to me. Uh, now, if you caught 300 and you throwed, you know, 200 of them back in the water and just kept catching them and throwing them back, well, okay, I, I'm, I'm with that. I can see that. But when I get what I want to clean, I quit and go home or either I start throwing fit. A lot of times... With me putting them in water, I'll start pulling the little ones out, and then I'm just, you know, I'm keeping the bigger, you know. I'm not going to bring home more than what I'm going to cook and eat. <laughs> I'm not putting them in the freezer, so. Y'all, thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I have had a good time. We have talked fishing. We've had a good time. We done put a lot of folks to bed. It is 1030, probably 1130 for a lot of y'all on the East Coast. Fish with white cornmeal. David, I favor the yellow cornmeal. But now, hey, I have used white cornmeal. There ain't nothing wrong with white cornmeal. That's for sure. I, I don't know. I've always favored the yellow cornmeal. I, probably because of the color of the fish. I, I don't know. But anyway, uh, we'll keep y'all in our prayers. I know y'all asked for prayer. I want to pray and uh, that everything goes well with y'all. I know some of you struggling with some things. Uh, looking forward to filming just in time tomorrow. That'll be out Sunday. I hope I got a video ready to upload for tomorrow. One of these fishing videos I'm going to put out sometime, probably around dinner tomorrow, I think. So thank y'all for watching and hanging out with me tonight. I love y'all. I really do, y'all. I am honored that y'all want to sit here and talk with me to 1030 at night. So I appreciate that. Remember, the best way to do things the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.